audiobook titled Superman in Solo Leveling, 01-70, by Slimesage Part 01. This work belongs to author Slimesage. Source Scribble Hub and RoyalRoad.com CH1 Calvin Booker was an old man who works as the manager of the most famous pub. At the age of 18, he registered himself in the army, fought the Nazis during World War II, and served the military for 30 years with the rank of colonel. He could have reached a much higher rank if it wasn't for an assassination attempt on him where he pretty much gets out alive but in exchange for his left arm which forces him to retire from the military. But then he was gifted by the government of a prosthetic arm. So, he didn't lose hope. Instead of pursuing politics like others, he built himself a pub with the help of his friends and some of his connections so he could have a stable income. During another twenty years spent managing his pub, he found himself a companion through his journey. He's a very intelligent chimpanzee which he named Caesar. He found him by chance in a forest when he is hiking, and Caesar was shot by a hunting rifle, so he brought him home and took care of him. As for why he called him intelligent? Well, he now works in his pub as a waiter. In just five days, Caesar learned the basics of a waiter, and ten days to not make any more newbie mistakes. Some were fascinated by this, while some didn't bother coming back to his pub which he didn't care about. Calvin continued his life till his companion's death, Caesar. Inside a white room, a chimp, the size of a ten-year-old boy, was breathing heavily. Caesar. Beside Caesar was an old-looking man whose body was shaking while tears were streaming down his face. Caesar was very smart, so he knows that his friend, Calvin, was very sad to see him go. He held Calvin's hand and slowly muttered, Thank you? Before Caesar's hand slowly dropped out of Calvin's hand along with a long beep sound that comes out of the electric vital sign monitor. The door was blasted open. Stat! The room was swarmed by both doctors and nurses while a nurse guided Calvin out of the room. When he's out of the room, Calvin wiped the tears out of his face before turning around and seeing the doctor coming out and walking toward him. When the doctor reaches him, he shook his head in sadness, signifying that Caesar didn't make it. Calvin just smiled in sadness at this before thanking the doctor and leaving the hospital. It's been five years since Caesar's death, and now he's back to managing the pub alone. While he's alone movies are the only thing that kept him entertained. During these years, he felt his body slowly but surely weakening, he's having a hard time breathing and moving his body. Calvin knew his time is close. But before dying, he wanted to feel someone loving him again while also inheriting his pub. So he adopted his ten-year-old daughter Ellie, who at first was afraid of him, but she slowly opened up to him. Calvin taught her how to manage the pub while he enrolled her in a school with his savings. In just ten years, she graduated summa cum laude. Right now she's managing the pub along with her boyfriend. At first, Calvin was tempted to take out his Remington 870 and blast the hell out of her boyfriend which he almost did when he heard the news. But Ellie stopped him in time while the boy has proven his love by putting himself in front of Ellie to protect her when he points his shotgun at him. It took the couple five years to get his blessings before getting married and he became the grandfather of Ellie's son Elijah. After five years, he finally lost his eyesight due to old age. Calvin could already feel death lingering on him. At the same hospital where Caesar took his last breath, inside a room an old man was breathing his last breaths with his daughter Ellie and her husband and son Elijah was beside him. Finally, he felt loved. During his hardest days, Ellie and her husband took care of his needs. And her son Elijah was crying on his deathbed. Grandpa, said the sobbing kid who was holding the bedsheets while tears of sadness were flowing out of his eyes. Father, Ellie was no different. Her eyes were red due to her crying. Meanwhile, Calvin finally felt his last breath but before closing his eyes and sleeping forever, 
he held Ellie's hand like Caesar did to him and muttered, Thank you. Before long Calvin's hand slipped through hers and the sound of a long beep was heard through the room, intensifying their cries. May 19, 2022, Calvin Booker died at the age of 88 as a virgin. But his story doesn't end there. When Calvin opens his eyes again, he saw huge towering people looking at him with their huge eyes. It's a boy. A man wearing a green surgery scrub said to a lady who was huffing with sweat rolling down her forehead. Give it to me. The lady said while the doctor heed what she said and gave the baby boy who looks around, confused about his surrounding, not even an ounce of cry. I is there something wrong with my baby? Why isn't he crying like the one in the movies? The lady said while holding her baby gently as a mother should. The doctor was also confused, so he grabbed his stethoscope and listens to the baby's heartbeats. B.A. Dumb. B.A. Dumb. B.A. Dumb. He seems to be alive, but doesn't cry. The doctor muttered before signaling an emergency situation and alerting the nearby nurses. Grab me my. Soon they started working immediately until. You wah! The baby cried making most of them sigh in relief. They passed the baby back to his mother, while the mother cooed the baby. Then the door was blasted open and a middle-aged man came inside shouting, Is it a boy? A red aura glowed around the lady while she stared at the middle-aged man. Shut up, she said making the man shiver in fear. Ma, ma, no need to be mad, darling. I was just checking if it is a boy or not, the man said while sweats are rolling down his forehead. The mother ignored him and continued cooing the baby who was about to fall asleep. CH2 When Calvin woke up, he saw a ceiling with a baby mobile with birds attached to its strings. Where am I? Calvin thought before remembering his experience earlier. Giants! He shouted in shock but what came out was baby cries. Slam! The door was opened and a beautiful lady went inside and carried Calvin in her arms. SSSHHH, mommy's here! She cooed while the earlier man entered with a bruise on his nose. He was just about to cuddle his wife when Calvin cried then his wife pushed him out, slamming his nose on the floor. Poor man. Daddy's here! The man cheerfully said while making some funny poses. So they're not giants, huh? Calvin thought in his mind, if his guess is right, then he must have been reincarnated as a baby. At first, he thought he went back in time, but he could see that his father doesn't resemble his father in his past life, while the same for his mother. In Calvin's last life, his mother died of disease while his father died in war making him an orphan. Now that he's alive again, and this time he has parents to lean on if ever he has any problems in life. He wanted to protect them but he can't for now, he's just a baby. So he still has to wait to grow up, if he wanted to protect his loved ones. While these thoughts were running through his head, his mother finally noticed that Calvin stopped crying so she cooed for the last time before bringing him back to his crib. Once they left his room, Calvin slowly fell asleep. Minus eight years later. It has been eight years since his rebirth. There are many things that he discovered. First of all, he's strong as hell for a baby. Why? Well, in his first month here in this world, his mother brought him outside, and it also exposed him to the sun. And when they went back, he started crawling like a bug. At first, he tried to hide it cause he knows that once the government heard of what he did, he is sure that they'll take him to a lab. But alas, it seems like fate was against him. His parents knew about it, and then he knew why there is a fucking camera in his room. But instead of being shocked, they just shrugged it off by saying that I have a future to be a hunter. Hunter? What's that? I mentally asked this myself. Since then, I started crawling around the house. My parents even bought an edge protector and placed it around the house. 
And then eight years have passed, and now I'm walking around our garden. One thing is my family is fucking rich, like very rich. And I'm also Japanese, and this world has something supernatural called gates, where monsters of different races reside while hunters with different ranks that determine their strengths are humans who awaken different powers or mana and use them to protect their fellow humans from the monsters. Both my parents used to be hunters but they retired and achieved success through business and politics. My father was a politician while my mother is a CEO of a pharmaceutical company. With a politician dad and a CEO mom, many people were jealous of my position. During these years, I discovered that the sun was making me stronger like Superman, my favorite hero. Super strength, super speed, x-ray vision, and even cold breath though I can't seem to fly like Superman, that'll be the problem of the future me. Oh, and by the way, my name is not Calvin anymore instead it is Akano Kenji. Right now I'm walking around the garden while the sunlight was nourishing my body, making it stronger and more durable. I'm currently waiting for my tutor who will teach me in every subject. A maid went inside the backyard and informed him. Young master, your tutor Tawada Sheena is here. I nodded at her, and she just bowed in respect. So I went inside and saw her sitting there with books on her side. Once I went in, I greeted her as usual. Good morning, Shina-sensei. She responds in return. Good morning to you too, Kenji-san. Let us start with a math lesson. God, I hate math. I rolled my eyes but still decided to study diligently for my parents. A few hours later, my parents arrived back home and greeted me and my sensei. Good evening, Shina-san. My mother Akano Hana greeted her as she walked toward me and pinched my cheeks while she continued. And good evening to my baby. Ouch. Welcome back, Mom and Chad. I said while mom is still pinching my cheeks which is the reason why I can't properly pronounce a word. It seems my little boy is studying very hard. My dad, Akano Chikashi said while ruffling my hair. Sensei stood up and greeted the both of them. Welcome back Chikashi-san, Hana-san. I told you, no need for formalities, you could just call us by our names you know. Hana pouted. I'll keep it in mind. She bowed her head. Anyway, you should invite your daughter, Kane, here tomorrow. It's Kenji-chan's birthday. She said while hugging me tightly in her bosom. Hi. She nodded. Then, please excuse me, I'll be going now. She bowed. My parents nodded and she left while a maid called us and said that the dinner is ready. Tomorrow morning. Inside a room, full of toys, a child was sleeping peacefully when suddenly the door was opened. Happy birthday, Ken Chan! His mother, Hannah, shouted while blowing a birthday trumpet. Waking up groggily, Kenji rubbed his eyes and saw his mother and father along with the maids and butlers was inside his room. When he heard what his mother said, he smiled happily and thanked them. In his past life, he never celebrated his birthday due to his father being always in war while his mother was sick. So seeing his new parents celebrating his birthday makes his heart very warm. With that, they went outside his room to continue celebrating his birthday. A few minutes later, his sensei Shina along with her daughter, Tawada Kane. When Kenji first saw her, nothing happens. What? Do you think he's some kind of a pedophile that lusts for a five years old kid? Well then think again, even if he's a virgin in his past life, he still has his morals. So he did what a normal kid should, he walked up to her and greeted her. Hello there, my name is Akano Kenji, what's yours? He held out his hand for a handshake. And my name is Kane. She answered while hiding behind her mother. Well then, nice to meet you. I hope we could be friends. Kenji smiles which seems to ease Kane a bit. Meanwhile, on the back, his father nudged his wife Hannah and whispered, I won. 
while Hannah just rolled her eyes at her husband's antics. 35. CH3. Many visitors attended his birthday party, from his parents' friends to politicians. He also met many hunters who worked under his mom. While some politicians introduced their daughters to me which, to be honest, I'm not interested in and a bit uncomfortable due to me being 93 years old mentally and having some children being offered to me just for connections. It seems like my father noticed my suffering so he excused me and distracted them by having a chat. While I went to where Kenne is and saw her still beside her mother clutching her skirt while chewing something in her mouth. I went to her and started to chat, unlike some snobby brats that were introduced to me earlier, Kane was different. She's far more collected and more behaved than those rich kids, which to be honest makes me comfortable. Do you like the party? I asked her, while her mother patted her head and left her to me. She just nodded her head and kept her head down. How can I keep a child entertained? I mentally thought it's not like she'll enjoy me talking about my deeds during World War II, right? Want to hear a story? I break off the silence by talking to her. She nodded in confirmation then I continued. Then, let me tell you the story of the beauty and the beast dot. Then for a few minutes, I told her the story of the beauty and the beast. Once I'm done telling her the story. I noticed that unlike other people when they're telling some stories they stopped and went to drink some water to replenish their I don't know saliva. Anyways, the same can't be said of me, even after speaking for ten minutes straight I don't feel the need for water, maybe because I have the same physique as Superman. Can a POV. I'm so nervous about attending this party, my mother insisted that I attend her student's birthday party. At first, I was against it but when I learned that my mother's student was the cutest kid in Japan and also my secret crush. It started last month when I watched the TV with mom. On the TV I saw him, he was being introduced as the cutest kid in Japan, and lastly, youngest awakened. It was like love at first sight for her, his eyes, his smile, his appearance, they're all perfect. So when she heard that they will be attending his birthday party, she was very excited that she can't even sleep that night. So the next day, she urged her mother to hurry up so they could go to the party earlier. When they went inside, her eyes frantically searched around and she saw him walking towards her. What am I supposed to say? Hi. You look good. Um, happy birthday? That's right. Mom said that first impression is very important. But when I was about to congratulate him on a happy birthday. Hello there, my name is Akano Kenji, what's yours? When I heard his voice, I froze but soon I overcome it and relied on. And my name is Kane. Wah! I stuttered, Kane, you idiot. First impressions are very important. When I looked at him, I saw him smiling at me before his parents called him to welcome the guests. Will he hate me now? What if he doesn't want a girl who stuttered during their first meeting? H.A. Third POV When Sheena heard her daughter sigh, she smiled at this. As a mother, she knew what was going on inside her head. She just patted her head and went towards the table while her daughter just clutched on her skirt and followed her while looking around frantically. She didn't even know anyone here except for Kenji and his parents. She just grabbed a mouthful of cake and ate it while giving the daughter chocolate that she found on the table before whispering to her ear. Make sure you brush your teeth later. She nodded before tasting the chocolate with a blissful face. She just lightly chuckled at this. Before long, Kenji arrived and took the initiative to chat with Kane so Sheena just patted her head and left so her daughter and Kenji could have some private chat. Kane POV Beauty and the Beast What a wonderful story. But too bad I was so mesmerized by his face that I didn't hear his story. I could just imagine a gate opening here at this party, 
and then I will be saved by him from a monster who is about to attack me like a night mom used to read for me during bedtime. How was it? He asks, breaking me off of my fantasies. I like you? I unconsciously said before freezing up and looking at his expression. Like me? Kenji was confused. I mean I like the story, I said while a blush crept up to my cheeks. I see. That's good to hear. Kenji nodded while I sighed in relief. That was close. Third POV. Kenji and Kane continued having a chat, though some snotty brat disturbs us sometimes. In the end, both Kenji and Kane became friends thanks to this party. Goodbye. Let us see each other soon. Kenji said to Kane who was just about to leave with her mother. Aunt. Kane cutely nodded. Kenji smiled at this and soon they left along with the guests leaving only Kenji, his parents, and the maids who were responsible for cleaning up. Kenji turned around and hugged both of his parents and said, Thank you. Small words but they contained deep feelings coming from the said speaker. His mother, Hannah, smiled before hugging him while the same can be said for his father, Chikashi, so he hugged both mother and son. The maids in the background kept silent to not disturb the touching moment of the family. Once they were done hugging each other they proceeded to open his gifts. The first one was from his father who gifted him a necklace that will shine a bright blue light and produce a blue transparent shield around him once it detects malice directed at Kenji. The said shield can withstand a full-powered attack of an A-rank monster. Once he hugged and thanked his dad, he then opened the gift from his mom. Inside the box was a paper that read about him being enrolled in a school. He jumped around and hugged his mother and gave her a bunch of kisses before thanking her. You see, Kenji was dying to attend school, not for education but to bring back the childhood he didn't have back in his past life. Because of his parents' early death, he was forced to live in an orphanage and work around the orphanage, and once he was old enough he enlists in the army. So he was uneducated and didn't even know multiplication in his past life. He wanted to have friends like other kids, he wanted to study properly along with children, he was longing for this. And now the chance is in front of him. You will be studying in the same school as Kenny, and we should go and sleep now. Tomorrow will be your first day in school. His mother informed him, and he nodded. He didn't know what school he was enrolled in. As long as he could experience the life of a kid then it doesn't matter. Soon it was already dark and the Akano family slept peacefully in their peaceful home. 30. CH4 Some of you guys must be confused. I read a comment that said about Gates being released 10 years ago, and then I realized my mistake, so I'll make this world an AU. The Gates appeared 30 years later instead of 10 like in the original. Thank you to FBI underscore 6938 for pointing it out. In the morning, Kenji woke up early to brush his teeth and went to the dining hall to eat breakfast. Good morning, Mom, Dad. Kenji greeted them before sitting on his favorite chair as usual. Good morning, Kenchan. As always, his mother was the first to greet him back while pinching his cheeks turning them red. Seriously what with these moms and their unrivaled strength when it comes to their children. Just to tell you, he is super durable, durable. How can she even make his cheeks red just by pinching? Good morning, kiddo his father said before taking a bite of his sandwich while reading a newspaper. Once he sat, he took a bite of his breakfast before eating graciously. After eating, his mother informed him, Take a shower and get ready, today is your big day. He nodded and tiptoed upstairs. Before taking a shower, he wanted to test his strength again. So he went to the gym first and lifted a barrel weighing two tons. He easily lifted it before muttering. As easy as always. Then he proceeded to three tons and the same happened. He lifted it as easy as hell. 
He continued doing this before feeling a strain when it comes to 30 tons. With this, he could already lift a Kawasaki C2 plane, and it'll increase more as he exposes himself to the sun. After that, he continued testing his limits. His speed was very fast. He could easily dodge bullets. His durability is very tough to crack. Though there is a small problem. Magic is very effective to him as Superman. This is the only problem he needs to solve first. His cold breath is chilly as always. X-ray vision is the same as always. Heat vision is super hot. It could slice through tungsten, titanium, alloy steel, and many more. He tried flying but he can't seem to do it no matter what he do. He'll also focus on this. He needs to fly. He wants to fly. Like a bird. He'll resume his training later. But first, he needs to shower and get ready he's almost late on his first day of school. Using his speed, he arrived at the bathroom in a second, then he took a bath. After wearing his uniform, he used his speed again and appeared in the dining hall and saw his parents who were just about to finish their breakfast. He doesn't care anymore if the world knows his power at a young age. What's the use of having such strength if you are just scared of people knowing it? I'm done, Kenji said. Wow, that was fast. His mom said before walking toward me and pinching my cheeks again. Let's go his father said before calling their driver. Once done, they all sat in the back seat of a limousine and told the driver to take off. While inside the limo, his mother was establishing rules. First of all, no bullying. That is bad. Second, always remember to call mommy okay? Third, listen to your teachers okay? But his father cut her off and said, If someone dares to bully you, Beat the shit out of M. His father grinned but that was soon wiped off when a glowing red fist smacked him in the back of his head. Stop teaching our son some nonsense and mind your language. His mom said before raising her fist and barraging his father with her punches. Muda. 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 Her eyes glowed red and continuously punched his father who was using magic to defend himself. Meanwhile, I just sweated at this and said, And mom, can you please stop? We're already here in my school. And then she stopped and her earlier demon face like what his father used to call it turned into a happy face. Of course, Ken Chan. Then she barraged me with her kisses before saying farewell. Oh, did I perhaps forget to tell you? Mom used to be an S-rank hunter who was known for her strength while her dad was an A-rank hunter who specialized in barriers and healing. Truly a magnificent couple. Suddenly, a realization hit him like a tidal wave. No wonder Mom could pinch my cheeks till it hurts even with my incredible durability. Kenji thought but he put this all aside and said his farewells before getting out of the limo. When he is out, he saw students looking at him like an animal in a zoo. Is he the youngest awakened? He is so cute. I want to hug him. Mommy, why are you saying that? Am I not cute enough for you? No. Walking towards the school he could hear everyone's voices like a yell even if they are whispering, super hearing for the win though he felt bad for the kid who was said not cute enough by her mother. K. Kenji. He heard someone from the crowds whisper his name so he walked out of the crowds who gave way for him. When the crowds gave way, he saw Kane bumping the tip of her index finger against each other while looking down in a blush. Kane. He called out to her. Wa. Ah, K. Kenji-kun, mom said I should guide you around the school. Ken acutely said. Well, thank you then. Let's go. He held her hand before walking away from the crowd. H, he's holding my hand. Kane was blushing while trying to hide her face. When Kenji saw this, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with kids nowadays?
before he shrugged and they toured around the school before they went to their classroom. Good morning, everyone. Kenji greeted. Good morning. The rest of the class greeted back. Where's your seat, Kane? Kenji asks. Kane then pointed out, and when he looked at where she points he was a bit shocked. So he walked towards her seat and saw scribbles and scrunched papers around it. There were words written on it that said, Cheater, cheater goes to hell. And many more words that are similar to a cheater. He just raised an eyebrow, really, what's with kids nowadays? He then sighed. But Kane mistook his sigh for a different thing. Oh no! He must have thought that I was cheating and maybe he doesn't want to be friends with me anymore. Kane felt tears fall on her cheeks while trying to clear the misunderstanding. I de didn't see cheat. Kane tried, she tried but tears were already streaming down her face. But suddenly as if she was enveloped by a warm blanket. When she raised her face she saw Kenji hugging her while patting her head making her feel bliss. Meanwhile, Kenji just sighed, he could see the students looking away as if they are guilty. When he notices Kane trying to defend herself while crying, she reminds him of his daughter, Ellie who was accused of cheating in her school but was trying to defend herself while crying too. That day, he investigated the matter, and what he got was, that a rich boy confessed to Ellie but was rejected by her. The rich boy then used his family's influence and connections so Ellie will be accused of cheating then he will come by her side and comfort her, and then she'll slowly fell in love with him. So he called his friends in the military who are now politicians or someone who has a big influence. The next day, the boy's parents were on their knees begging him. Back to the present, he knew that she is not lying, he could hear her heartbeat thanks to super hearing. So he hugged her and whispered, Who? 26. CH5. Flashback. It was Kane's first day of school, she wanted to meet new friends, new teachers, and even the janitors. On the first day, many talked to her, the teacher seems to like her, she got many friends and at home, she tell her mom about this. Her mom was of course very happy for her daughter to have new fresh friends. So on the second day, the same friends talked to her about many different things like favorite food, favorite color, and who's your crush. It was all fun. In the first month she was popular in her class due to her perfect grades while the teachers were very proud of her but it all came crashing down when they asked her secret about having good grades. What she said at that time was, my mom is a teacher she is teaching me at home. And they all quieted down. At first, she was confused about this, and the next day, her usual friends didn't talk to her all day, and her teacher seems to become strict with her. She was confused about all this, why are they avoiding her like a plague? She smelled herself, and there doesn't seem to be something wrong. She checked her face in the mirror in the bathroom, and she looked fine. When she tried to talk to her friends, they just waved her away. She is sad? Really? She was just a kid, why must they be cruel to her? Did she perhaps do something wrong? Or maybe this is just a prank on her, and all will return to normal the next day. Oh, how wrong she was. The next day, she saw her books under her chair were destroyed. There are some scrunched paper and doodles all over the pages. What's this? She looked around to see who did this and saw her friends laughing at her while the rest of the class was whispering with each other, and she could clearly hear them. I heard that she cheated. Yeah, I heard that her mother was the one doing her assignments at home so that's why her grades are high. Even the teachers are agreeing, it seems like it is true. HMPF, she deserves it. Tears welled up in her eyes which caused her to run out of the classroom and run to the bathroom and hid in the stall. She was crying, it hurts her. So that day she went home with her mother while she is asking about her puffy eyes due to crying. She just gave her a reason so she'll not be suspicious. 
She wanted to tell her mother about this but she was afraid that even she will accuse her of cheating. So she hid it in her heart and endured the bullying in school. Since then, the bullying continued for a whole month until she met Kenji at his birthday party. Flashback ends. On the school rooftop, Kenji and Kane were eating their lunch while Kane was narrating what happened. I see. Kane lowered her head, afraid that she'll lose her only friend in this world. I believe you. When she heard these words, she looked up and saw Kenji smiling warmly at her. She felt warm inside. It was like a fluffy feeling. She wants to feel this more often. When she noticed that she has been staring at Kenji for a long time, she blushed and lowered her head again then she muttered. T thank you. But I suggest telling your mother about this, Kenji said while taking a bite of his sandwich. She raised her head and said, B but what if she didn't believe me? What if she will also do the same as others and hurt me? Tears were welling up in her eyes. Jesus Christ, what a cry baby. Kenji mentally rolled his eyes and said, Trust me, I know Shina-sensei more than you. She will believe you as I believe you after all she is your family and family always leans on each other whenever they are in their bad times. He smiled warmly. She thinks about it for a few seconds before nodding her head. Kenji is right. Her mom will believe in her. After all, she is her mom. She raised her head again and this time with a determination plastered on her face. You are right. I'll tell her later. That day, both went home, but this day, Kane didn't encounter any more bullies. They went home, each had a mission on their mind. Kane's mission was to tell her mother the truth, while Kenji's was to use his family connections and shut down the school while bringing justice to Kane, punishing the perpetrators. At home, Kenji was telling both of his parents about what is happening to Kane. Hmm, I knew I should have investigated that school first. Don't worry, son. I'll bring you good news soon. His father Chikashi said before calling someone on his phone. Meanwhile, his mother Hannah was pinching his cheeks once again while also saying, My son is a hero. He can't stand injustice like a true hero. Kenji just smiled awkwardly at this while also wondering about what happened to Kane. To what a household. Inside the house, Sheena was hugging her crying daughter while speaking. You should have told me this sooner. No matter what mommy would always believe in you, okay? From now on, if you have problems with your school, tell me immediately. Sheena said with a shock tone, but this was not for Kane. It was for the students and the teachers who made her daughter suffer. Don't worry, mom. Kenji said that he'll take care of it. Just wait for the news tomorrow. Kane said while Sheena was just looking at her daughter flabbergasted. I must thank Kenji properly after this. Sheena said in her mind before readying their dinner, while the same can be said to the Akano family. The next day, there is some big news going on around Japan. Breaking news! Five Japanese men was arrested this morning due to illegal drugs, blackmailing, and child abuse. The lady reporter's face was very angry at this moment. It was identified that the four of them were teachers, teaching at Shuayan High School, one of Japan's prestigious schools, while the last one was identified as the principal of the said school. Breaking news! Twenty families lost their jobs and no one wanted to hire them anymore at the same time. What could be the cause of this incident? Breaking news! A gate was discovered inside that. When Kenji watched this news, he looked at his father who was very smug at the moment. Kenji just deadpanned and stared at his father whose smug face was like, Praise me. Meanwhile, the same can be said for the Tawada household. Both Tawada's mother and daughter were staring at the news with shocked faces. That's my teachers! Kane shouted. Sheena just stared at this with a shocked expression. 24. CH6. The next day, Kane was just staring at Kenji after arriving at school. What's wrong? 
Kenji asks while taking a small bite of his bacon sandwich. Kane stared at me for a few seconds before opening her mouth. Did you do it? She asks. Since I know what she was talking about I nodded and said, Didn't I say it yesterday? That I'll take care of it. She stared at me again before muttering, Thank you. Then took a bite of her egg sandwich. It was then Kenji's turn to stare at her, which she asks a few seconds later. What? He then stared at her egg sandwich and said, You like egg sandwiches? She nodded. Bacon tastes better, Kenji said before taking another bite off his bacon sandwich. Kane pouts and said, Egg sandwich is better. While Kenji countered her, Bacon. Egg. Bacon. Egg. They bickered about each other's tastes before the bell rang. Bacon contains some essential micronutrients, including potassium, which supports bone health, heart health, muscle strength, and prevents high blood pressure. You can also find over 50% of the RDA of two essential minerals in bacon, selenium and phosphorus. Kenji said. What? Kane's mind was confused about what Kenji just said. Never mind, oh the bell rung. Let's go back. Kenji said before running back down the stairs. Wah. Wait for me Kenji. Kane immediately runs after him. So for the whole day, no one bullied Kane anymore, no one destroys her books anymore, and no teacher harasses her anymore. For Kane, who has been suffering bully for a whole month, this gave her a sense of freedom and happiness. And when he looked at Kenji, who was the one who saved her from the darkness, the same fluffy feeling washed upon her. Thank you, Kenji-kun, Kane secretly said in her mind. Five years later, many things happened around Kenji. During these years, Kenji's strength has increased tremendously. If before he could only lift 30 tons before feeling a strain then this time he could lift 100 tons before feeling a strain. Because of this, his parents were left with no choice but to register him as a hunter, making him the youngest hunter ever. But he was not given a rank yet due to his growing strength and mana, they just suspect that it'll stop growing after reaching his prime, and then they'll rank him. Oh, how wrong they are. Because of this, he was once again all over the news, attracting many countries who wants to recruit him to their country, but was being forced back due to his family's huge influence leaving them no choice but to leave him be. That's not the only thing that improved, his relationship with Kane also improved, and now they are much closer to each other. Sometimes, she came to visit his house whenever she has time. They played... They chat and did many more things that children will always do. Currently, both Kenji and Kane are inside his room playing HVM, a version of Plants vs. Zombies in this world. It's just like the PVZ version but zombies were replaced by monsters from the gates and the plants were replaced by famous hunters around the world. A few minutes later after playing, they both got bored and lay on the bed. It's so boring! Kane said while waving her arms up in the air. Well, it's our vacation. Maybe I should ask my parents to take us to Disneyland. Kenji replied. Okay. Let's go. Kane shouted before jumping off the bed and dragging Kenji out of the room. Mom! Dad! Let's go to Disneyland. Kane told Kenji's parents, Yup, ever since she has been visiting here, She's been calling Kenji's parents mom and dad. And his parents gladly accepted it, while Kane's mom Sheena also doesn't mind. Yeah, sure, let's go. His dad said before calling the driver while also inviting Sheena. Meanwhile, his mother Hannah who was just out of the bathroom heard this and decided to change into formal clothes. Later, they're all inside the limo chatting with each other. I heard Go Gun He from Korea just cleared an A rank gate this morning. Sheena was having a chat with Kenji's parents. Yeah, the man is in his 60s but still kicking monsters' asses, Shikashi said while sipping on his wine. 
Yeah, I still remember when we first met, that old man can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my punches. Hannah added. How about that Thomas Andre? I heard he just got promoted to S rank yesterday. Hannah continued. Thomas Andre? Yeah, I still remember that tough guy. Chikashi said before refilling his wine. Meanwhile, Kenji was taking note of these names after all he wanted to test his strength, and there is no one better than the famous S-rank hunters. Of course, he is listening to them even without his super hearing. He wondered what his rank is going to be, after all, he is Superman, a god amongst men. Since S-rank is the highest rank currently, then he should be beyond that right? Before long, they finally arrived at their location. When they went outside the car, the sunlight hit him directly all over his body making him feel his increasing strength. Soon they went inside Disneyland and had fun riding some rides, chilling, and many more. Let's ride that one! Kane said while pointing at the huge Ferris wheel towering over everything. So they went for the ride, but Hannah and Chikashi wanted to be alone in the Ferris for something Kenji don't care about. But isn't this restricted for only adults? I don't think they will allow Kane and Kenji to ride this, Sheena said. You're right. Well, sorry, pal. You're not yet Aloe Dash. When Chikashi was just about to refuse, he saw Kane's pleading face. Eh, fine. Chikashi gave up, shocking Sheena. Boo Dash. Don't worry, we have our ways, Chikashi said while grinning. But it seems like Sheena is still against this. Putting children on a dangerous ride is a no-no for her. Then, I'll be joining Kane and Kenji during their ride to protect them in case something goes wrong. Sheena said to which everyone agreed. Underscore. When the three of them were already inside, they all just chatted normally. But Sheena was acting weirdly, with her eyes frantically looking around while her hands were holding on to her seat. When she suddenly looked down at the window, her eyes rolled up and she slowly lost consciousness. Kenji just smiled weirdly at this. What happened to your protecting us in case of danger, huh? Kenji shakes his head at this and looked at Kane who was looking outside the window with her cute eyes. Kenji smiled warmly at this, and then he saw Kane turning around and looking at him. Will you also leave me? Kenji was confused about this so she asks. What do you mean? She answered. Because dad left me and my mom. When she answered, there were tears in her eyes, and a sad expression is plastered on her face. Did he perhaps say that he'll buy some milk? Kenji asks. We? Oui? How did you know? Kane was shocked for a bit then she nodded. Figures. Kenji muttered before looking at Kane with warm eyes. I'll never leave you. Slowly tears fell from Kane's eyes before tilting her head and saying, Kenji, thank you. Before long she felt sleepy and slept at Kenji's shoulders. Kenji's expression was deadpan while muttering, Really? Am I the adult here? 23. CH7. After the boring ride on the Ferris wheel, of course, they wake the mother and daughter duo first before proceeding on looking for the next ride. During their search, Kenji could hear Sheena muttering to herself, I'm such a useless adult. I let a child look over me instead of me looking over them. He just patted her back but instead of comforting her, it intensifies her muttering. While they were walking around, Kaya! Which caused them shock and look at each other. Chikashi was the first one to move and said, You guys stay here. He then nodded at Hannah and they both called their bodyguards to escort their children and Sheena before running off to the scream. When they were both running, they could see many people running the opposite of them which means somewhere in the scream earlier something bad is happening right there so they hasten up. When they reached the source, they saw a massive gate with spider monsters coming out of the gate while dead bodies were scattered everywhere in the park. Dear! Hannah called out and Chikashi nodded and searched for a survivor while Hannah ran towards the spider monsters and when she is close, 
she stomped her left foot forward, her back going downwards which forces her right arm with a closed fist to speed forward. Fwoosh. Huge amounts of air waves were cast out due to the strong impact of her punch which caused the half of the monsters to fly back, dead. Meanwhile, Shikashi found at least five survivors and now he is healing them while waiting for the hunters to arrive. Back to Hannah, she was fighting all the monsters with her fist while dodging some of them. Dodge, punch, kick, elbow, and repeat, monsters upon monsters were flying everywhere like a leaf in the wind. When she was about to be cornered, she punched the ground with her full force causing a 10-meter radius huge crater on the ground while the monsters were flying back at full speed giving Hannah a space to breathe. Suddenly, a spider spitted out a venom behind her very fast, and before she could react, a barrier formed behind her which blocked the venom saving her. When she looked back, she saw her husband, Chikashi with a glowing orange eye and hand just like in the old days when she fell in love with him due to his braveness in saving her from a boss. Meanwhile, a spider sneaked behind Chikashi and was about to attack him when suddenly, a blur appeared and smacked the hell out of the arachnid. It revealed, Hannah with glowing red eyes and aura while smiling at him which caused Chikashi to smile back, he was also saved by her back in their days. Then they both nodded at each other and faced their front with their back against each other. Looking around, they were surrounded by the arachnids, some big, while some small, and some were even as big as a truck. They both dashed forward and attacked every monster surrounding them. Meanwhile, Sheena, Kane, and Kenji were both running away with the bodyguards protecting them from the front and behind when suddenly, an arachnid as big as a car appeared and attacked everyone behind while countless small spiders appeared in the front cornering them all. But waves of flame appeared and swallow every small spider. And when they looked the source, they saw a man with a huge build with a gray beard and hair, warmly looking at them. Meanwhile, Sheena who was shocked finally looked at their savior with a grateful expression. Hello there little ones, what are you both doing here? The man asks, to which Kenji answered first. We were just walking around, sir. I see, then where are your parents? The man asks again. They're back there fighting these monsters. What is your name, sir? Kenji asks. To him this guy looks very familiar like he's seen him somewhere. The man smiled and said, Iro, my name is Iro, but you little ones can call me uncle. Underscore. Back at the source of the gate, both Chikashi and Hannah were both being cornered by the arachnids. Damn! Where the hell are the hunters? Chikashi yelled in anger. Both he and his wife has been fighting for an hour, and the reinforcements haven't arrived yet. Then suddenly a sea of flames consumed the left side of the monsters making big of them sigh in relief that the reinforcements have arrived, but when they look at the one who caused it, they were shocked when they saw him there and behind him are his son Kenji, Kane and Shina. What are you doing here? Hannah was the first one to speak in the silence. We're here to save you, Mom! Kenji replied. Shikashi just shakes his head on this. They already knew his strength, but that doesn't mean they'll not worry about him especially since he has Kenny by his side. Suddenly, a spider as huge as a car sneaked behind Kane and was about to attack her when red-hot beams sliced through its body. When they looked at the source they saw Kenji with an angry expression, while his eyes were glowing in dark red. Kenji-kun Kane was fearful when she was almost at death's door when suddenly her childhood crush saved her like a knight in shining armor, making her crush him more. Kenji just sighed before the dark red light on his eyes died down a little bit, and when he turned around he saw more arachnids coming out of the gate. There's more. Kenji whispered but everyone could hear it clearly making them all turn at the gate. The first one to attack was surprisingly, Kenji who disappeared and appeared in front of a spider who was late to react before being punched into bits waking them up except for Kane who he turned around before dashing at the monster earlier. As if a signal, 
Iro, Chikashi, and Hana attacked while Sheena just defended her daughter just in case. Kenji was rampaging. With his freeze breath, countless spiders got frozen before shattering into pieces. Punching spiders in one hit was easy for him. Sometimes his eyes glowed dark red and got beams sliced through them even the structures behind were not spared. Good thing the civilians were already evacuated by nearby patrol polices. Unknown to them, a Japanese blogger was recording them live all this time. No to NTR. Damn, I didn't think we'd see the shaman Akano Chikashi and the boulder fist Akano Hana fight again after their retirement. And is that their son, the famous youngest awakened Akano Kenji? Noob Master 69. Damn right they are. Especially their son. He looks so cool when he saved that girl. Small PP, a family of hunters, huh? This is the first time I've seen someone have three awakens in one family. Vampire lover. Maybe they're the descendants of a god. Lala. Shut up at vampire lover gods don't exist. Change my mind. God. Don't make me come down there you punk. Lala. A few minutes later. The hunters finally arrived, and when they saw mountains of spider corpses with a 14-year-old looking kid sitting atop the corpses while looking at them, his clothes dyed in red while his glowing dark red eyes were staring at them making them shudder in fear. 22. CH8. The next day, the Akano family was all over the news in Japan. Reporter. Today. We shall discuss the hottest topic that has been circulating the whole of Japan this week. Reporter Last week, a dungeon outbreak occurs in Disneyland, California, where spider-like monsters wreak havoc inside the park. The good news is, the famous duo Shaman and Boulder Fist were having their vacation in Disneyland when the dungeon outbreak occurs. But that is not the only thing that is hot right now. Reporter The son of the duo Akano Kenji, better known as the youngest hunter in history, was recorded fighting these monsters with a specific set of skills. Reporter According to a monster specialist, the spider monsters were confirmed to be B-rank monsters while the bigger ones were A-rank monsters. If this is true, then Japan will be welcoming its newest S-rank hunter. Inamiya, reporting news live here in HVM News Station. Akano Household you're famous now, Shikashi said to Kenji while sipping on his coffee. Meanwhile, Kenji who had just gotten down from his room after waking up heard his father and smiled wearily. He does like the feeling of being famous, but being famous does come at a price. Blackmail, assassinations, cyberbullying, and many more. But of course, with a price, there is value to it. Not only does he have fans that will support him, but he would also get special treatment wherever he goes and many more. Good morning. Kane came downstairs while still rubbing her eyes. The Akano family greeted her back yesterday. Both mother and daughter duo were scared by what happened so they asked the Akano family to let them stay at their mansion. Flashback. When they went back to Japan, they encountered countless reporters and flashes of light from their cameras while asking their questions. Chikashi and Hannah were the ones answering their question while Kenji butted in whenever the question is about him and before long, they dismissed the reporters and drove back home. As they arrived Kenne spoke. See can I sleep with you Kenji? As she speak, she was flustered and her cheeks were blushing. She felt that she was too bold to ask Kenji to sleep with her. So when she was just about to take back her words. A actually need dash. Before she could complete her sentence she was cut off by Kenji. I don't mind. Kenji said back in his previous life. He slept beside his daughter Ellie whenever she had bad dreams. So for him. This is half normal and half bad. Half bad. Because Kenji knows her feelings for him. But he just pretended to be oblivious to it. I mean she's a goddamn child. He's not a pedo. Maybe when she's in her twenties, he'll consider it. But not now. When Kane heard his answer, her blushing intensifies while thoughts were running through her mind. W will sleep together. 
W. What if I smell bad? I need to take a shower first. T. Then I'll brush my teeth in case we we we. Unknown to her, smoke was rushing out on top of her head. Meanwhile, Kenji could already guess what was inside her mind. What a lewd child. He shook his head but then he remembered that their parents were also inside the car so when he looked at them, he saw his parents giving him thumbs up. While Sheena was glaring at him coldly while muttering, You dare take away my daughter from me. I'll feast her tear heino opes thy demonio higamo son traito. Is she summoning Satan? Kenji felt like laughing when he heard her incantation. Kenji ignored them, and soon they entered the mansion but they first all had their dinner before going to bed. Meanwhile, Kenji was inside the bathroom, rinsing his body with warm water before soaking his body in the bathtub while he was at it he was scrolling down on his phone. Korea's strongest S-rank hunter Go Gun he cleared another A-rank gate along with A-rank hunter Wu Jin Chul. Guide, how to increase dick size by 10 inches, click here to watch. A rank gate open near White House, Thomas Andre to the rescue. Cute girls 10 kilometers away from your home, wants to F asterisk CK. Akano Kenji, son of Akano Chikashi and Akano Hana save Disneyland. Free gel that can increase hair growth, click here for more. Top 2 Asia's Strongest Azura Kishimoto Challenge Luji Gang, Asia's Top 1 Strongest. Maria wants to have a chat. Click here to chat. Granny is horn. Annie wants you inside. Click here for more. Kenji immediately stopped reading. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with people nowadays? He shook his head before standing and going out of the tub but then he noticed his little brother standing proudly making him embarrassed. Well I'm growing so this is normal. He muttered before he went out of the bathroom with a towel wrapped around his lower body but when he opened the door he felt that he hit something which caused him to look down and saw Kenny blushing while averting her eyes. Kenji squints his eyes before muttering, Pervert! Which was heard by Kenny making her look at him in both fear and shock. W wait, this is just a mizdash. But Kenji didn't let her finish her sentence. Hmm? Oh, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the maid who I noticed peeking inside my room. Then he pointed out the door which Kenny looked at and surely, she saw a pair of eyes widening in shock before running away. Seeing this, Kenny sighed in relief before lowering her head and going inside the bathroom. Kenji just chuckled at this before dressing himself and right on time, he saw Kenny going outside the bathroom fully dressed. He nodded at her and said, Let's sleep. He then placed a futon near the bed and grabbed some pillows and blankets before lying down. Kenny just stared at him with an O expression before shaking her head and said, You can sleep in the bed, I'll take the futon. Though deep inside her, she was expecting Kenji to be a gentleman and disagree with her or maybe he'll do like those mangas she read and make him share the bed with her but his expectations were crushed. Oh, okay, Kenji said before jumping out of the futon and lying on the bed. Meanwhile, Kane stared again before lowering her head in sadness but when she was just about to lie down on the futon, she saw Kenji looking at her while smiling playfully. The mechanic worked on her mind before she shouted in her mind, He's teasing me, before pouting while Kenji laughed out loud. Kenji then makes space beside him and patted in while saying, I was just teasing you, come here, let's sleep together. Kane nodded and blushed before lying down next to Kenji who turned off the lamp beside him. A few minutes later, Kane can't take the silence anymore and said, Kenji are asleep? She then received a reply. Yeah you too? Isn't it obvious, you're talking to me now? Kane smirked at him, this is her revenge. But then she received no response, she thought that she went too far so she turned around and was about to apologize but when she turned she saw him looking at him with a smirk. Want to apologize? Kenji teased. Kane pouted in fake anger before turning back around and closing her eyes to sleep. 
Kenji shakes his head before lying down again but then he heard her speak. Thank you. You're welcome. Replied the smiling Kenji before also closing his eyes to go to sleep. 22. CH9. The next day, after they are some good breakfast, both Kane and Kenji went to school while Chikashi went to his office with Shina, and Hana was left at home. Hana may be a CEO, but she doesn't need to attend every day to her office. Her secretary is there for that. She'll only go to her office only if some matters needed her. And as for Shina, the last time Kenji heard from her, she wanted to stay at the mansion and gossip with his mother, Hannah. As soon as they left, just outside the mansion an invisible figure moved and followed the limo. Inside the limo, Kenne was avoiding Kenji's eyes out of shyness while Kenji just shook his head, then suddenly the limo stopped, and just outside, an invisible figure attacked all of his bodyguards, and before he could continue, he was thrown back by a force and when the remaining guards look at the source, they saw their young master. Kenji standing there with his fist forwards. Who the fuck are you? Kenji asks. Meanwhile, the invisible figure showed itself and it was seen that the perpetrator was a male and wearing a black spandex suit leaving only his eyes, like a ninja. A ninja? Kenji confusingly asks. It's an organization of assassins composed of assassin class hunters. One of the guards informed Kenji. I see. Kenji nodded in understanding before sensing an object thrown at him, and when he saw what it was, he just tanked it, and his skin did the job, tanking the kanai. Maybe I shouldn't have suppressed my hearing. Having strong hearing has both advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is pretty obvious, and the disadvantage is the one I hate, and it's about me hearing through the world and I could hear everyone and even those who are having sex and someone asking for help. Kenji was thinking while tanking all the kunais thrown at him who can't even leave a mark. Jeez, you're annoying, Kenji said in an annoyed tone before dashing and appearing behind the ninja and smacking the hell out of him, throwing him back while his body is skidding through the pavement destroying it in the process. He walked towards him and saw his whole body bleeding while twitching slightly. A dark red light appeared in his eyes before shooting a hot beam destroying the assassin's head before stopping. When he turned around, he saw the guards looking at him with both fear and admiration, he sighed and said to them, Let's go now, I'll be late for school. They nodded their heads like a chicken pecking their heads. He went back and sat at the car, and saw Kenne inside, looking at him without even an ounce of fear only a smile. He just smiled back and sat beside her, and a few seconds later, the car finally drove off. While inside the car, Kenji was in his thoughts, I should practice my hearing slowly. So the first thing he did was try to spread his hearing to at least one kilometer around him. After a few tries, he succeeded and he could hear the sound of honks, engines, tires, and people yawning. He then practiced blocking all the unnecessary sounds and just like earlier, it succeeded after a few tries. And before H could practice more, the limo stopped, and finally, they arrived at the school. But not before making a mental note to use his family's influence to investigate this so-called assassin organization. Once they were just outside the school gates, they entered inside, and just like that, the school was noisy as usual but the moment they both entered inside, it quieted down and they all looked at him, in fear, admiration, envy, love and many more. He ignored them all and went to his class. A few hours later, the school ended and they both went home, but not without asking his parents about the assassin earlier. Their answer was, Son, leave it to us, tomorrow morning. I'll make that organization's boss kneel and beg you for forgiveness. That was just his father's answer. His mother's response was, Era, era, someone dared to hurt my Kenchan. And her aura intensified making his father sweat and was forced to calm her down. Just like what his father said, tomorrow morning, he saw his father sitting on the back of a muscular man who was missing a leg and an arm. Son! 
just like I promised the boss is here. Shikashi said while patting the man's head like a pet. SS sorry! The man said while sweating, while Kenji just stared at him. He could feel that his parents were hiding something from him, even if both of them are influential, and a massive one at that. It's pretty impossible to make a boss of an organization submit immediately the next day. Kenji made a mental note about this but first. I. When man was sweating in bullets and was secretly hoping he forgives him, he swears he's not gonna touch the Akano family ever again. No. But all his hopes were crushed down and he tried to bargain. As spare me! He tried to make a despaired face to make the kid feel pity for him, but he just saw him eating his breakfast normally while Chikashi snapped his fingers and two huge guys dragged the man out while begging and shouting for his life. So much for a leader of an organization. Kenji rolled his eyes before finishing his breakfast, just in time for Kane to go down and ate her breakfast. Soon they both went to school again, and the same happened just like yesterday. A week has passed, just like this, and finally, the Hunter Association in Japan sent him a message to determine his mana and his rank. Both his parents agreed on this, and the next day, news spread in Japan about Kenji being assessed. The countless reporters attend the Hunter Association while flashing lights were flashing around. And a limo stopped in front of the association's gates, and two famous hunters came out. Look! It's the Akano family! One of the reporters shouted while the flashes of cameras intensified. Shikashi just waved his hand while the door of the other side of the limo opened and Kenji came out, and just like earlier, the flashes of cameras intensified more. Kenji looked at his parents and nodded at them. Soon they entered the front door, being guided by a man in a suit. Once they entered, they met many people wearing white robes suitable for scientists. They entered another door again and inside, they saw a spacious hall in the middle was an old man wearing samurai armor, and right beside him are scientists and a man wearing a yellow suit. Welcome to the Hunters Association, Kenji-san. My name is Oda Banagana. You can call me Ban. Chikashi, we have met again. The samurai man greeted Kenji first before calling Chikashi as if they were old friends. Hello there, Chikashi said before staring at Ban. Ban just chuckled nervously. My name is Matsumoto Shigeo, but you can call me Shigeo. The man with a yellow suit introduced himself with a smile while putting his hand forward for a handshake. He may look like a good man. But Kenji knew that this guy's smile is fake, and he could see inside this guy's eyes agreed. In his past life, he had met many politicians and he knew that some of those politicians are corrupt. So he could determine a person by staring at their eyes. Sometimes you can see a person's true nature with their eyes. Let's proceed with the assessment. Bond clapped while speaking. He could see that Kenji doesn't seem to like Shigeo because of him not shaking his hand. Kenji nodded. Time to determine his rank? 19. CH10. Kenji was first told to touch a huge ball that will determine the energy inside his body. Energy? I thought it was mana. Kenji thought confusedly, but he still put his hand forward and touched the ball which started glowing in dark red. So, what's the reading? Ban asked the scientist responsible for the energy testing. The reading says error, the scientist said while showing the screen to Ban and Kenji's parents who were also watching the procedure. Then, that means his energy capacity is beyond an S rank, Ban said while he is shocked, Kenji is a rare breed born in their country. While Shigeo on his side was having his mind running at full capacity on how to recruit this potential hunter under him. Of course, that's my little Kenshan. After all, he's my son. Hannah said while hugging Kenji again while drowning him on her huge bosom. His dad Chikashi noticed this, chuckled, and decided to help his son. Darling, I think he I dash. But before he could continue he saw Hannah glaring at him with a glowing red aura. 
is having fun being loved and hugged by you. What a lucky boy. Even I, his father don't have that privilege. Chikashi's attitude changed from saving to bootlicking and said while giving his son a thumbs up. Kenji just sighed in defeat at this and let his mother hug him. Ahem, I think we should continue the test. Ban coughed slightly before informing the Akano family. Hannah let go of her son before nodding her head at Ban before she went back right beside Shikashi. They went to another room and inside is another spacious room and in the middle is a small room with see-through glass as its wall. And on top of it is a cylindrical-shaped metal while Kenji can see that it's connected to a bigger metal with wires around. This is the strength testing room. The title says it all so I don't need to explain, Bond said while trying to make a small joke. Silence. Nun laughed. Even his close secretary, Shigeo, didn't laugh. Ahem, let's proceed. Kenji-san, would you please step inside and place your palm on the cylindrical-shaped metal above? Bond said while Kenji did as he said and placed his palm upwards until his palms touched the surface of the cylindrical-shaped metal while he placed his left hand behind his back. Now we'll slowly increase the weight of it. If you want you could place both of your hands if you can't handle it anymore. Bond informed him while Kenji nodded. 100 kilograms! Bond said while he saw that Kenji doesn't seem to be phased so he increased. 500 kilograms. Still the same. 1,000. 2,000. 3,000. 4,000. 20,000. Once it reached here, everybody was shocked. Kenji's strength was enormous. They even thought that the testing machine was malfunctioning. So Bond decided to increase it more and shouted. 30,000. 70,000. This time, Kenji's right hand twitched a little before going back to an unfazed state. 90,000! This time, Kenji's arm was twitching for 10 seconds straight. They thought that they have to stop but after the 10 seconds passed the twitching stopped so they increased. 100,000! This time, Kenji finally used both of his hands. 110,000! 120,000! 200,000. This time Kenji's arms were already red and Kenji shouted. Stop! So they stopped but everyone in the room including his parents was very shocked. And my son is so strong. Hannah was shocked even in her mind while the same can be said of Chikashi who was already seeing Kenji as someone like his wife but 100x stronger. This is ridiculous. How can a mere 13-year-old kid can have that strength? Shigeo finally can't hold it anymore and shouted in surprise. Of course. That's my son. Chikashi didn't let this chance go and praised his son. Hannah just clapped her hands while Bond's jaw dropped to the ground at what he is seeing. And if his information is right, Kenji can continuously grow in strength, and they still don't know his limits. Bond picked his jaw and asked Kenji, Do you think you could lift more if we do this again next year? Meanwhile, Kenji who was looking at his arms that already healed after being torn earlier nodded at his words. T then will test your other abilities, after that will determine your rank, Bond said while gesturing to the scientist on his side to guide them to the next room. The scientist nodded and they were led to the next room where everyone could see various rocks metals, and many minerals. We have many minerals here like rocks, iron, steel, and many more. Bond said before continuing, We'll test your laser vision and your freeze breath. Kenji nodded and he went to the rock area, and his eyes glowed in dark red and hot beams came out of his eyes and sliced the rock cleanly in half. Then he went to the steel area and the same thing happened along with the iron, gold, appetite, corundum, calcite, fluorite, topaz, quartz, and many more, even the diamond famous for its indestructible defense. Then he proceeded to test the minerals formed inside the gates like mana stone, various monsters' bones, and teeth. 
And finally, this is a cloth. Bond showed a red and blue cloth while the rest stared at him dumbfoundedly. Ha! Don't look at me like that. This cloth is famous for its anti-magic properties. It was taken from a famous monster that came out of an A-rank gate. Even the strongest magic cannot destroy this cloth. I just wanted to test if your hot beams could also slice through this. Bon explained to them. Meanwhile, a glint passed on Kenji's eyes. This is a treasure. But before that, he asks, Then why would no one want to use this? It's a bit useful, right? You're right. But the reason why no one wants this is because it was said to be cursed by the boss of that dungeon. Bon explained again. Everyone who wears it was deprived of their mana, so basically they cannot use mana anymore, and the world of hunters usually relies on mana. Bon continued explaining. When Kenji heard this, he mentally smirked, he must have this, he doesn't need mana anyway, his fists are enough to eradicate monsters. Do you have more of this? I would like to buy it. Kenji suddenly said shocking them, even his parents a little. But why? Shigeo said while squinting his eyes, maybe he could use this opportunity to hook this guy under him. None of your business. Kenji muttered but was still heard by everyone. Why you brat? Don't your parents teach you how to respect your elders? Shigeo burst out not caring for the consequence. He's had enough of his disrespect. During the testing, he tried many things to have a conversation with him. He's been bootlicking for an hour and all he got was being ignored. Chill, this is why you've got a ligma, Kenji said while staring at him. Ligma? What's ligma? Shigeo was confused by this. Ligma balls, Kenji said while trying not to laugh. He could still remember when one of his old friends back in the war used this on him. PFFFTT. Chikashi can't hold it any more longer and laughed out loud while Hannah just quietly laughed. Ban just smiled at this. He was also aware of Kenji's coldness towards Shigeo, and he doesn't know why. Veins popped out of Shigeo's temples. He was very angry at being disrespected by someone younger than him. He doesn't know why he did it, but his hand moved on its own and slapped Kenji on the cheeks. Meanwhile, Kenji didn't even bother dodging and let the slap hit him. Ah! Shigeo shouted in pain while holding his injured hand. When he slapped Kenji with all of his might, he felt as if he had just slapped Tungsten. He is nothing but an ordinary man. CH11 Shigeo! Ban immediately interfered. He called up the guards and escorted him out, but while Shigeo was being escorted, he was glaring at Kenji intensely. I am sorry about that. Ban apologized. He wondered why Kenji was angry at Shigeo. Have they already met? In fact, he was right. It was that time when he fully opened his super hearing and he heard the name Matsumoto Shigeo and how he's purposely assigning weak hunters to a false information gate. For example, he sent Sami to D-rank hunters to a D-rank gate which in truth was actually a B-rank gate. Shigeo believes that by making weak hunters experience life and death, they'll reawaken and make them stronger while at the same time making Japan strong. And to make them loyal, most E to D-rank hunters are poor so he'll come in and shower them with money by laying their bills, housing, and even their medical treatment. That way, they'll feel indebted to him and make Japan stronger than other nations. Truly a madman, Kenji thought. He just shakes his head and stared at Ban who was looking at him. Is there something with my face? Kenji innocently asks. And nothing, nothing. Ban waved his hand while scratching the back of his head with his other hand. Then, let us proceed, Kenji said while walking towards the door. Ah, uh, me too. Ban seems like he was having a hard time speaking so Kenji asks him. Is there something wrong? Kenji asks. Um, that is not the room for the next testing. It is this way. Ban replied while pointing his finger towards the opposite of Kenji. I know that. I was just looking around. 
Kenji shamelessly lied before walking towards the door that he pointed to. The rest of them followed while ignoring his shamelessness. Once they entered the next room, Bon explained, This is the defense testing room. Then he continued, We'll test your toughness now. Kenji was then told to walk in the middle of the room. Stone testing, Bon said before countless stones from pebbles to boulders were thrown at him. All this was brushed off by him. Flames, Bon shouted again, and a sea of flames rushed toward Kenji who was also unfazed by this. Then they proceeded to continue testing his durability with freeze, tsunamis, guns, machine guns, and bombs. Bon was eager to try to nuke him but just one glare from both his parents stopped Bon from doing that. He values his life more than his curiosity. After that, they gave him spare clothes because his clothes were destroyed during the testing. Bon wanted to test his durability against magic but he just brushed it off when he saw he could tank every attack they throw at him. Magic might also give the same result. And besides, there's no strong mage available at this moment. Strength check. Mana slash energy check. Durability check. Bon said while checking the paper he was holding. From our testing earlier, we could make you an S-rank hunter. Not only you're the youngest hunter, but you'll also be the youngest S-rank in the whole world. Bon said while not hiding his excitement. Then, thank you for your help. We'll be leaving now so please excuse us, Kenji said before bowing slightly. You're welcome. And yes, you can go now. Please take care. Bon nodded and said but then he remembered something and shouted. Wait. You forgot your cloth. Bon said before whispering to his assistant. Soon after the scientist left, he came back with a properly folded cloth and handed it to Kenji. Kenji nodded before taking the cloth while looking both at his parents, who were smiling warmly at him. After that, he held their hands and left the hunter association. When they went outside, the flashes of lights from cameras intensified while reporters were constantly asking questions. Sir! When will you be participating in clearing dungeons? One of the reporters asks. Please wait for the association's announcement, Kenji answered. More questions were asked but the Akano family just ignored them and went inside their limo. Excited? Chikashi asks his son. A little bit, Kenji said. Earlier he was a bit nervous about the magic resistance test, but good thing they thought that his durability against physical means also applied the same to his magic resistance. A few minutes later, they were finally at their home. Once they were inside, they saw Kane playing with his toys all alone. What's up? Kenji greeted her. Kenji! Kane excitedly yelled his name before running up to him and smashing him with her hug. Lonely? Kenji asked which Kane nodded while burying her head in his chest. After a few seconds of hugging, they sat on his bed and Kenji recounted to her what happened earlier. Why do you hate that Shigeo guy? Kane asks. I just feel like hating him. Kenji shrugged his shoulders. Meanwhile, Kane just stared at him with a deadpan expression while her face was asking, Really? She shook her head and firmly said, Then if you hate him, then I'll hate him too. Before hugging him again. Really, what's with the hugging? Kenji was confused. For the past few days, Kane has been frequently hugging him from time to time. Nothing, I just felt like it. Kane answered while still burying her head in his chest. Kenji just let her be. As much as she likes her hug, she is still a kid for God's sake. A few minutes later, Let's go and eat dinner. Kenji said while removing the sticky girl who fell asleep on his chest. What? Kane was woken up by the movement. Let's go. Kenji firmly said before holding her hand and walking outside the living room. After they ate their dinner the Akano and Tawada family slept soundly that night. 20. CH12 The next day, 
The entirety of Japan was once again shocked when the Japan Hero Association announced the rising of a new and the youngest S-rank rank. Breaking News Akano Kenji, who was known as the youngest hunter was assessed yesterday morning about his certified rank. New S-rank hunter has appeared in Japan? Will Japan rise up to its former glory once again? Kenji, who was the center of the news, was calmly eating his breakfast along with his family. Third POV. That fucker. I swear I'll kill you. Shigeo was inside his office, gritting his teeth and cursing around. When suddenly, he remembers that he could just assign Kenji to a B-rank gate under the guise of a D-rank gate. So he called up his secretary to search for some B-rank gates. His secretary was also involved in his reawakening project. It is a project that Kenji mentioned, about putting weak hunters to high rank gates under the pretense of D to C rank gates. But deploying an S rank hunter was no joke, it'll be headlines, and not only that, but he will also need Bon, the chairman's permission. So he went up and searched for D rank gates that are close to a B rank gate. He planned to tell Bon about the D-rank gate which Kenji will clear as it is his first time. Then he'll let the driver take Kenji to the B-rank gate. And once he is inside, that is where he'll come into play. First, he'll blame the driver and fire him. Then he'll send A-rank hunters to rescue Kenji inside. But then his family might forcefully enter so this is where his plan B begins. According to the hunter's policy, only a certified hunter, or miner, could enter gates. First, he'll give them a choice. Either they let his A-rank hunters rescue Kenji, or they could sign themselves as hunters again and save their son. If they choose the latter, not only the Japan will get stronger again after their comeback as an S and A-rank hunter, but they might also feel grateful to him for giving them a chance to rescue their son. Not only that, He'll inform that brat that he sent his men to rescue him which he will feel indebted to him, and then he'll propose to him a contract about working as a hunter under him in the guise of joining the Japan Hunters Association. And once signed. Boom! Three birds with one stone. Kikik, this great plan of mine will surely work. Shigeo mentally smirked and laughed. Oh you brat, you shouldn't have messed with me. No matter how strong you are, your teeny tiny mind will never be able to bear the trauma of what will happen to you. This time, Shigeo evilly laughed out loud like a villain. Third POV I wonder what's for breakfast? The center of Shigeo's plan, Kenji, mentally asked himself. So he went down and saw bacon and eggs. But don't judge a book by its cover. This egg was made by a monster chicken D-rank monster, and the bacon was from a pig king, a B-rank monster. Yes, that's right. Monster meat can be eaten as long as it is purified by a B or A-rank mage. So their meals every day is all top quality. So he sat down and ate along with his parents who were doing their own business. Dad, can you sew this cloth into this? After eating, Kenji disappeared and appeared in less than a second and showed them the cloth that they received in the Japan Hunter Association, and then he showed his sketch of Superman's suit, but different from the original. First of all, the underwear is not on the outside, and second, it's a mix of cloth and armor. Pick on the cover. Isn't this the cloth yesterday? Chikashi asks and Kenji nodded. Sure. Chikashi immediately agreed, as long as his son wants it, he's even willing to reach a star for him. Thanks, Dad! Kenji gratefully said before hugging him. Meanwhile, Hannah was jealous that her husband was getting hugs from their son. Be of course Chikashi didn't forget to use this chance to tease his wife by sticking his tongue out like a kid. Timark appeared on Hannah's forehead before smiling and smirking. Suddenly Chikashi was having a bad feeling about her smile and saw Hannah's mouth open and spoke without a sound but he could still understand it despite no sounds. You'll sleep on the couch tonight. 
as if the thunder strikes him in his head, Chikashi didn't expect that his beloved wife would be this cruel. W -a dash. Chikashi was about to apologize when Hana cut him off. Kenji! Come hug mommy! Hana said while spreading her arms, ready to receive his hug. Of course, Kenji will not forget about his mom and also hugged her. After that, they went on their way. Chikashi went to a small village near Shirakawa. He heard that a gate broke out there and caused casualties in people's homes. His purpose there was to assist, donate goods, and give them temporary homes. Meanwhile, Hannah heard that someone just tried to steal files in her office and she is needed there. Our protagonist, Kenji, and Kane were on their way to school when the limo abruptly stopped. Kenji helped Kane to stop her from falling. He's using his hearing and already predicted this. 10. Kenji counted. He looked outside and saw his same bodyguards fighting the attackers. RPG. One of his bodyguards shouted and Kenji saw an RPG coming into his limo. Zeoem. As if stopping time, everything slowed down except for Kenji who was staring at the RPG that is headed towards them. He first grabbed Kane, then went towards the front seat and also grabbed the driver. After that, he blurred and appeared behind a tree, far away from the battlefield. After dropping the both of them, he blurred again and grabbed the rest of the bodyguards and dropped them on the same tree. After that, he went to the battlefield and saw that the RPG was close to the limo. He ignored the RPG and stared at the assassins who were wearing full-body Kevlar suits. He first grabbed them all and positioned them. From the outside perspective, you can see ten men in full-body Kevlar suits were close to each other and forming a circle. Once that was done, Kenji went back to the limo and grabbed the RPG bomb then placed it in the middle of the circle with its tip facing down. After that, he removed the Kevlar suits that they were wearing and saw that they were all Americans. Americans? Why would they want my ass? Kenji confusedly asked himself but decided to put it aside for now. After removing their suits, leaving them in their birthday suits. He stepped back a little and the time resumed again. 16. CH-13 Asterisk boom Asterisk An explosion occurred near the Shuayan High School turning the alarms on while panicked students were running around like chickens. Meanwhile, the teachers were trying to discern the situation while calling the polices. Some students tried to sneak to the place of the explosion but were caught by the security guard who was a C-rank hunter. Can a POV I feel death flashing before my eyes, but before I died I want to hug Kenji one last time. When suddenly, my vision blurs and I saw myself behind a tree along with the driver. So we died, huh? I tried to look for Kenji and saw the guards appearing, but I didn't care about that. I saw that Kenji was not here, meaning he's not dead, I feel happy be you dash. My trail of thoughts was cut off when we heard an explosion near us, so we turn our heads and saw an explosion occurring. What's that? I asked but suddenly I felt a hand touching my shoulder. So I instinctively turned and dropped a wheel kick on whoever tried to touch me aside from my beloved Kenji. Itai! I held my feet in pain, it felt like I just kicked steel so when I looked at the one who touched me, I paled and saw Kenji smiling at me. Yo, Kenji said making me faint. Third POV. Yo. Kenji greeted Kane whose eyes rolled up and fainted. Hmm? Kenji confusedly stares at her fainted form. K Kenji done. His driver interrupted him. When Kenji turns to look at him, he saw his driver along with the bodyguards kowtowing. What's up with you guys? Kenji asked them. W, we have failed. This is the second time you've saved our lives. One of his bodyguards said while tearing up. Stop kneeling, you guys. Kenji sighed, 
He isn't used to people kowtowing, though he was used to being respected due to his past life military, but that was all a salute not kowtow like this. We will not stand here unless you punish us. They all said in unison. Kenji just stared at them kowtowing before sighing again and saying, Fine, fine. I'll tell father to punish you. Now let's go. We'll be late. Kenji yelled. Hi. They said before running back to the limo that was littered with bullet holes. Once inside, they proceeded to ride to school. On the way there, Kenji also woke up Kane who immediately apologized a hundred times. Kenji just sighed and forgave her. Soon they reached the school and saw students running randomly. What's going on here? Kenji asks while stepping outside of the car along with Kane. Look. It's the new S-rank hunter. We're saved. One of the students shouted in excitement followed by the rest. Meanwhile, the teachers and the new principal sighed in relief. Although Kenji was very young, they believe in the Japan Hunter Association's choice. I'll repeat, what's going on? Kenji repeated. One of the students speak up. We heard an explosion near here. I think a country is testing their weapons on us. What's going on inside his head? Kenji mentally asks when he heard the student's answer. Kenji shook his head and announced, It's just a false alarm. When they heard him, they all sighed in relief. Soon the school continued as usual while the teachers canceled their calls to the hunters and police saying that it was just a false alarm. But the police will still investigate just to be sure. Soon the school ended. As usual, Kenji and Kane went home but saw an additional car parked in the garage. When they went inside, they saw Shigeo talking with a kind smile to his parents. Yo! Kenji greeted. Ken-chan! Hannah stand up off the couch and march toward Kenji and pinched his cheeks as usual but this time, Kenji doesn't feel a thing. Aw, Ken-chan I can't pinch your cheeks anymore. Hannah sadly said. Kenji just smiled and said, Well, at least we could still hug each other. Kenji said before enveloping Hannah in a tight hug. Yay! Hannah cheered up and hugged him back. Ahem. Chikashi coughed to get their attention which worked. Dear, we have a guest. Chikashi reminded her. Hannah turned around and glared at him before mouthing, You'll sleep on the couch again tonight. Chikashi smiled wearily. Ever since Kenji was born, he felt like he slept more on the couch rather than their bed. Ahem. What I've been saying was we would like to invite Kenji-san here to participate in a D-rank gate raid led by a B-rank hunter, Shigeo said while pushing the rim of his glasses making them shine. Kenji smiled at this. If that is true then this so-called D-rank gate must be a B-rank gate. In fact, he doesn't mind. This is much better. After all, he's already killed someone in his past life. He even experienced death so no need to go through PTSD once again. Kenji noticed that both his parents are staring at him waiting for his answer so Kenji answered. Yeah, sure. Kenji gave his answer excitedly which makes Shigeo smile creepily. That's good. We're already looking for a D-rank gate and I would like to ask if you're free tomorrow. If you are then we'll start tomorrow. Shigeo excitedly said which makes the Akano family look at him weirdly. When Shigeo realizes that he was too excited, he nervously chuckles while pushing the rim of his glasses. S sorry about that. I was too excited because of our country having a new S-rank hunter. He explains. The Akano family temporarily accepted his excuse before chatting for a few minutes. It didn't take long before Shigeo excitedly leaves. In the car, Shigeo was grinning and cackling like a madman. Kakik, what a naive kid. Shigeo continued to cackle before leaving the premises. Told you, Dad, he's weird, Kenji said before holding Kane's hand and going upstairs. Well, I already investigated him and knew of his dealings. Though I'd like to expose him, 
Kenji insists on letting him play his last game. Chikashi shrugged his shoulders while explaining when he saw Hana staring at him with a raised eyebrow. Hana just sighed before glaring at him. You're still sleeping on the couch tonight. She said before standing up and walking upstairs while swaying her hips. That night, Chikashi silently cried in his sleep. 17. CH 14. The next day, Kenji woke up and went to shower. After showering he went downstairs and saw his dad on the table with a tall box on his side. Chikashi noticed him and greeted him. Good morning, son. Eat first, I have something to show you. Kenji did as he was told and ate his breakfast followed by Kenne and Hana who just woke up. Once they're done, Kenji asks, What is it, dad? Chikashi smiled and took the tall box on his side and presented it to him. Kenji confusedly looks at the tall box. Is it his birthday? Chikashi noticed his confused look and explained, It's your costume. Open it. When Kenji heard him, he brightens up and opens the box. Once opened, he saw a mannequin wearing a blue and red costume. Exactly a Superman costume like he requested but he changed it a bit. First of all, the underwear is not outside like the original costume. Second, it looks more like armor rather than a cloth. That's because he requested it too. He doesn't want to wear something that chokes his body like Spider-Man. He prefers something like this. The cover is the image. Once done checking it up, he stand up and hugged his dad first. Thanks, dad! He said before also hugging his mother since he could feel her stare at him when he is hugging his dad. Wear it! Chikashi encourages him. Kenji smiled and nodded before doing the iconic Superman wearing his costume like in the movies. He disappeared and appeared but nothing changed on his body making everyone confused. Where's your costume? Chikashi asked confusedly. Kenji smiled and slowly opens his shirt on his chest with both his hands revealing the Superman costume. Once done, he's finally on his costume while everyone just stared at him dumbfoundedly. What was that? Hannah couldn't hold it anymore and asked. Nothing just felt like doing it, Kenji replied. They just shake their heads and ignored that scene. So, what does it feel like? Do you feel uncomfortable? Chikashi asks. Which, Kenji shakes his head and said, Nope. In fact, I feel really good. Chikashi sighed in relief. So, ready for your first raid? Hannah changes the topic and asks Kenji. Kenji nodded. Although he knew that he was being schemed, that doesn't mean he was not excited. He can't wait to crush some monster's skulls with nothing but his bare hands. Suddenly he noticed Kane was looking a bit down so he asks, What's wrong, Kane? Which startles Kane and her eyes darted around nervously, especially at his parents. He noticed that she started getting more nervous and keeps fidgeting. So, he held her soft hand, and they went upstairs but not before thanking his dad one last time. They went inside his room and asks, What's wrong? Kenne stopped fidgeting and sighs sadly. It's just that I felt useless. Kenne talked. Kenne POV. When both me and Kenji went home after almost being killed if it wasn't for Kenji Kuen. I felt useless. That was the second time he saved me without asking anything back. I tried to talk to him if he wants something from me but all he said was, being by my side is all I want from you. Although it was sweet it was crushed by his next words. Because you're my friend. Although I was saddened by it, at least being by his side is enough for me even though I'm not the one he's gonna love. And besides, we're still kids and I haven't confessed yet so there's still a chance for me. But I'm weak. Does he still want me to be his friend if I'm weak? I'll just be a burden to his life. Once he's achieved enough fame, I'll just be a pebble to his eyes. 
After all, he's the youngest S-rank ever. I even heard his feats, and I'm so amazed. What's wrong, Kane? I was startled when I heard his voice. It was so smooth, so charming and so handsome like a prince charming. I wanted to confess to him right here, and right now, but I was nervous, I could see his parents being disappointed in him by having me as his girlfriend. After all, I'm just a weak gerdash, eh? I was startled when Kenji-kun suddenly held my hand softly and dragged me upstairs. We went to his room and asked me again. What's wrong? It's just that I feel useless. Third POV. It's just that I feel useless. After all, you've been saving me ever since we've met. Kane told him. Kenji was just a bit shocked. He didn't expect that her thoughts about him would drag into this. What are you saying? I don't mind. After all, we're friend dash dot. When he was just about to say friends, he noticed that Kane lost some light in her eyes. Kenji narrows his eyes and realization hit him. I see. I guess you really like me. I thought it was just some silly childhood crush. Kenji sighs. Hey, Kane. Kenji called out. Hmm? Do you like me? Kenji suddenly said which startles Kane. WWW what are you saying? Of course I don't like you or anything. Kane was frantic, not knowing what she was saying right now. I see, Kenji said with a disappointed expression. When Kane noticed this, she finally realized what she said and fear took over her. And 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 no I didn't mm mean that. Kane tries to explain which makes her look cute. Then do you like me? Kenji asks again. I. Kane doesn't know what to say. She wants to confess to him right now. Yes. Finally, Kane gave up and confessed. Kenji grins and said, Then do you want to go on a date with me? Eh? Kane was shocked. She thought she was gonna be rejected but she didn't expect this answer. I said, Do you want to go on a date with me? Kenji repeated. A, are you asking me to be your girlfriend? Kane just wanted to confirm. Kenji nodded which makes Kane beat red while smoke was coming out of her head right now. Before they knew it, Kane fainted on the spot. Kenji just scratched his head at this and muttered. I hope she's not dead. You can drop it now. 19. CH 15. After settling Kane on his bed, Kenji went out of his room and said, Are you happy now? It looks like he's talking to the air, but a few seconds later, a shadow came out and reveals Sheena who immediately kneeled. Thank you for accepting my selfish request, Kenji-sama. She then bowed her head. Please stand, Sheena-san. Kenji sighed and helped her stand up. Why do you even want me to be her boyfriend at such an early age? Kenji asked confusedly. Yesterday he and Sheena talked in private and asks him to accept Kane's confession without explaining why. Meanwhile, he who was confused at that time decided to accept her request since he treats her as part of his family and families always got each other's back. And besides, he could already guess the reason for it. Every night I could see my daughter looking up to you. Every day she comes to my side and continued praising you about everything you've ever done. Then one day, I saw her coming to me with a sad face. I asked her why but the answer I got was mom, do you think I'm pretty? Sheena sadly said while looking down. Meanwhile, Kenji just stared at her and urged her to continue. Sheena did and continued. So as a mother... I feel hurt on seeing my precious daughter sad and depressed at such an early age. So I had no choice but to beg you and I'm very thankful to you for accepting my selfish request. After speaking, she tried to kowtow again but was stopped by Kenji. Kenji sighed. But let's establish some conditions. Kenji said shocking Sheena a bit. Please. Ask me anything. She bowed again. Kenji sighed again. 
first of all, will not be doing what couples do like kissing until she's 18 or higher. Lastly, you won't tell my parents about this until she is 18. Kenji said which Sheena threw confused but still agrees since there is no harm. I just hope dimensional FBI doesn't exist like those I've read on the internet. Kenji silently prayed in his heart. Soon Sheena and Kenji parted ways unknown to them someone was watching them. POV Hmm. Kenji. You should hurry up. A fifteen meter tall being with dark red armor and glowing dark red aura said in a deep tone. Guess I'll need to hurry up your progress so you can bear my power without consequences. The dark red being said before turning to his right. Are you sure this is the way? He asks the man on his side who was wearing a cloth over his head with three pairs of wings on his back. Of course, it'll work. After all, Ashbonsama also seeks my help. I guarantee you that this is the fastest way, as long as you keep the end of the deal. The architect said while smiling. Immortality, right? That's easy to me. The dark red being said while continued staring at the abyss. Third POV Kenji woke up the next day and excitedly jumped off his bed while putting his Superman suit underneath his hoodie. Kenji went down and saw his parents eating breakfast so he also ate followed by Kane and Shina who stared at Kenji for a few seconds and turns away silently. Are you ready, son? Chikashi asks his son Kenji who was obviously excited. Yeah, I can't wait, Kenji replied. Soon after they ate, a black sedan stopped in front of the mansion and the driver went out. Halt, state your purpose, the guard on the gate said to the driver. Meanwhile, Kenji heard this through his super hearing and was confused about which era this guy came from. Ah, uh, I'm currently here to deliver Kenji-sama to the location of the gate. When Kenji heard this he told his parents, and he went out. Kenji just got outside and saw a black sedan parked near the gates. Ah, uh, young master! Shigeo-sama has asked me to fetch you, the driver said in a cheered tone. Kenji just nodded at the guards and they parted ways. Kenji turns around and hugged both his parents, and also hugged Kane who blushes and Shina who muttered thanks. After that, he went inside the black sedan and went off followed by a series of black sedans composed of his bodyguards. But these bodyguards are different, since Kenji could clearly feel that these bodyguards are at least B to A rank hunters. Soon, they finally arrived and Kenji saw the glowing blue gate that was surrounded by some hunters and miners. Kenji also saw Shigeo among them giving commands and his face cheered up when he saw Kenji stepping out of the black sedan. Kenji-san! Shigeo shouted while waving his hand. Kenji nodded at him and stared at the gate. This is the D-rank gate I'm talking about. Although it might look bigger than the normal D-rank gate, I assure you that this is the D-rank gate. Shigeo shamelessly lied to him. Kenji just nodded and asks, When will we be starting? Shigeo replied, We can start later since my hunters are still preparing. Kenji just nodded and waited for five minutes before they could finally start. I'll go first, Kenji said to Shigeo. Sure, Shigeo said, but it was different in his mind. Fine, if you want to die early, then go ahead, and mentally smirked. Without saying anything, Kenji went inside, but before everyone could also enter, they saw the gate turn red at the last moment. A on A rank gate! One of the hunters shouted in shock. Even Shigeo was shocked by this event. This is not on the script that he has. Soon, the Japan Hunter Association including Kenji's parents was immediately informed. Nanny! Bond shouted in anger when he heard what just happened while talking on his phone. This is bad. The Akano family definitely won't let us get away with this. Bon muttered before standing up and going to the A-rank gate location. 17. CH-16 After the Akano family was informed, 
They both immediately abandoned what they were doing and rushed to the location of the A-rank gate. Once they reached, Hannah immediately sucker-punched Shigeo who was thrown a few meters away. It'll not be a surprise if Shigeo died by that punch. After all, he's just a normal man, and facing a punch from an S-rank hunter is no joke. Han, calm down. I'm sure Kenji will be okay. Chikashi immediately calmed her down. Hannah heaves a breath before calming down. What if he got injured inside? Hannah said in a worried tone, this is the first time she felt powerless since she reawakened. Han, getting injured inside a dungeon is pretty much normal. Chikashi hugged the woman, although he is also a bit worried for Kenji. He knew that as a man he should never show weakness in front of her wife. And besides, Kenji is as strong as hell. I'm sure he could figure something out. Chikashi mentally relieves himself from bad thoughts. And we'll also make sure the Japan Hunter Association will never get away with this. Before Chikashi looked calm but when he said this, his eyes turns cold and his aura bursts out, stunning everyone in the vicinity. Soon, a sedan car skidded and Bond came out while sweating a bit. I'll personally find out who's responsible for this. Bond immediately said to the cold Chikashi who was hugging his wife. You mean him? Chikashi pointed out towards the floor that is dyed in red blood making Bond shocked a bit. If his guess is right, then this blood spray belongs to Shigeo. Bond just shook his head and said, We'll try to compensate you. Which was rebuked by Hannah. Compensate? Do you think my baby's life can be compensated? Just like Chikashi. Hannah also burst out her aura making everyone faint in fear, pain, and shock, and while some of them fainted in pleasure. And then no! I didn't mean that. Bon immediately declined her words and tried to find some fitting words that'll make the demoness calm down. But no matter what he does, he can't seem to think of a reason so he just shuts up. HMPF Hannah turned her head to the side and stared at the red gate. Baby, please be careful. Hannah anxiously said while Chikashi just patted her shoulders and hugged her from behind, also praying for Kenji's safety. Unknown to them, Kenji was just strolling around the desert. A rank gate, desert. Damn! I didn't expect I'll be transferred to where the sun hits the most. Kenji said while grinning. He feels so good being bathed in sunlight while strolling around. So far, he hasn't met any monsters. Where the hell are they? Kenji said while looking back at the red gate. And why did the gate turns red? I should have listened to history lessons. Kenji shook his head. He was too excited that he didn't bother researching on Google about gates. Suddenly, he saw a shark's fin swimming under the sand. What the? Sharks on sand? Kenji chuckled while waiting for the shark to strike him first. Without even waiting for a minute, the shark immediately jumped out of the sand and opened its mouth to swallow him whole. That's kinda small. Kenji confusedly said while staring at the small shark that was about to swallow him. He expected the monster to be at least bigger than the spiders he fought at Disneyland. I'm kinda disappointed. Kenji shakes his head before punching the shark on its cheek turning it into a red blood mist. Geez, at least bring me some strong monsters, Kenji said while walking away. Without even managing to walk for at least a minute, another shark's fin came and tried to attack him which he just punched to death again. Soon many other sharks also followed and attacked him, which caused him to retaliate, and it took him an hour to finish them all. That'll be the hundred, Kenji said while his gloved fists were smoking hot. It was then that he noticed that the sun's heat was intensifying burning the sand, slowly turning it into shimmering glass. Wow! It feels good. Kenji smiled while staring at the sun, even his eyeballs are enhanced like Superman. Suddenly, another shark appeared in his vision, 
At first he thought that it was just another normal shark but when he focused, he noticed that it is much bigger compared to the previous ones. Suddenly, the shark's mouth opens and when Kenji thought that the shark was gonna butte him off, he saw a yellow ball of light shine and release a beam, turning every sand into shimmering glasses. At first, Kenji thought about dodging but then he sensed that the beam of light felt very familiar to him, so he decided to stay and tanked it. And it seems like his guess is right. Hmm? Isn't this sunlight energy? Kenji muttered while putting his hands behind his head and relaxed. This feels good, Kenji said and before he knew it, the beam slowly decreased and finally, it stopped completely. That's it. Come on, give me more. Kenji grinned while glaring at the shark. Huff huff. You're out of breath? Since when did sharks get exhausted? Kenji confusedly asked before deciding to finally finish him off. Thanks for the charge, though. Kenji said his words before slapping the exhausted shark to death. Hyunning! Smack! Before the shark was about to be smacked, it released a loud strange noise which irritates Kenji more and killed him. Like any others, the shark turns into a red mist of blood. Soon enough, Kenji heard loud rumbles behind him that causes him to look back and stare in shock. Right in front of him are the same sharks but these are different, they're bigger, and all of them are full of muscles. How does he know? Well, their fins have a trace of muscles and their below are six-pack abs. Strong. Kenji safely nodded before dodging a jaw of a shark. And fast. Kenji added when he saw that the shark that attacked him was very fast compared to the previous one. Now that he looks at it, one shark stands out, out of all of them. This shark is so different that Kenji could see the shark was standing like a human and had muscular arms. He looks like King Shark from the Suicide Squad movie except that he is muscular and has eight pack abs. Kenji then stares at the horde of sharks with King Shark which he will call, for now, standing in the middle of them. I hope you guys are ready for a dance. Kenji grins while slamming his right fist on his left palm producing a shockwave that pushes the sands back and shatters the glasses on the floor. 19. CH 17. The Akano and the newly arrived Tawada family were chatting with each other. It's been an hour, isn't it? Sheena worriedly said while staring at the swirling red gate. I am sure he will be fine, Kane said with a bit of worry and fear in her tone. After all, he just asked her out yesterday, and dying inside a gate, while not fulfilling his promise breaks her heart, and she also felt powerless. Of course, Chikashi and Hana noticed this and comforted her. Of course, you are right, Kane chan After all, during the assessment, Kenji-chan shows his power that is beyond S-rank hunter, you know, Hana said while patting Kane's head. Kane just nodded meekly while Chikashi just sighed and stared at the gate, while mentally thinking. Make sure you're gonna be back to us in one piece. Many of us here are waiting for you, son. Meanwhile inside the red gate. I hope you guys are ready for a dance. Kenji smirked before blasting off and punching the nearby shark before blasting off again and kept repeating. But his massacre was stopped when he felt himself being drowned in the sunlight beam. Ah, uh, thanks for the meal. Kenji grinned, feeling the increasing strength inside his every cell. Soon Kenji also released his laser beams overpowering the shark's beams. With his laser beams, the shark's numbers slowly dwindled but suddenly his laser beams were pushed back by someone else's. If his guess is right then the king shark's beam was the one who pushed his laser beam back. Wow, we're the opponent! Kenji said before intensifying his laser beams while the king shark also did the same. On the outside perspective, you could see two beings, one that looked like a half shark and a half giant releasing beams from his mouth while the other one was a muscular teen also releasing his laser beams locking the both of them in a laser beam competition. Slowly, 
King Shark was losing to his advantage so he ordered his remaining shark minions to also release their beams to help him. The minions followed and released their beams which is a bit tiny compared to King Shark's beam. Well, this was fun. I'll charge up a bit. Kenji said before stopping his laser beams allowing the intense combination of countless sunlight beams to hit him with full force, destroying and melting everything on its path. Soon enough, Kenji was engulfed in sunlight beams making King Shark think that he won. Once thinking that he won, the sunlight beam slowly loses its power till the line of sunlight beam dwindled to nothingness. Seeing that his job is done, King Shark along with his minions turned their backs and was about to go back when suddenly, I feel full. Kenji's voice resonated around the area making King Shark and his minions stopped and turned their back around just to see their enemy standing there without a scratch, even his clothes don't have one. Impossible dot. King Shark muttered in monster language. Wait, you can talk? Kenji, who was stretching his arms, abruptly stopped and said in shock. Stupid human, King Shark said again in monster language. Hey! Who are you calling stupid? Kenji refuted not knowing that he could understand and speak the monster language. What? Impossible. King Shark said in shock while staring at Kenji. Impossible? What impossible? Kenji asked confusedly for a second before noticing something strange when he speaks. Hello? Hello? Hello. Ihemlea. Kenji tested his voice a few times before panicking. What? What language is this? Kenji fell into a state of panic while clutching his throat trying to fix it. Meanwhile, King Shark just deadpanned and stared at him like he was an idiot. Enough! How do you know monster language, human? King Shark growled in anger. I don't know. Kenji shrugged his shoulders. By the way, are we gonna continue our fight? Kenji decided to ignore the unknown language that he is speaking and decided to end this so he could finally get out. I'll end you! King Shark yelled before rushing at him in anger. With such a huge build, it's a huge surprise that he could move at sonic speeds appearing in front of Kenji while his fists are already closed and ready to punch. Kenji just puffed his chest as if ready to take the punch from a 15 meter tall King Shark. Boom! The sand beneath Kenji exploded and created dust of sand surrounding them and blocking their vision but for Kenji, this was nothing since he could just use his x-ray vision to detect his enemy. There you are! Kenji grinned and punched to his left. Boom! With his punch, King Shark was thrown away for a few meters before skidding his body on the ground. Why you survived that? Kenji was amused, this is the first time someone could take his punch without exploding in a mist of blood. Ha ha, this is nothing to me. King Shark stands up and the hole on his chest slowly regenerated as fast as Wolverine. You have healing powers? Kenji questioned. Didn't you just see it earlier? King Shark asked the dumb human. Without waiting for Kenji's reply. King Shark disappeared again in a sonic boom before punching at Kenji who just blocked it with his palm. But a gust of wind blew behind Kenji blowing everything on its path, showing how strong King Shark is and how tough Kenji's palm was. Kenji whistled and said, You pack a punch dot. Before continuing, How about a taste of mine dot? Kenji clenched his fists before punching King Shark on his chest three times in a second. Boom. 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 With his three consecutive punches, King Shark's body was separated in half before being thrown away in sonic booms. Jigwa dot. King Shark finally can't take it anymore and spit it out blood while his upper and lower body was slowly generating flesh and attracting each other, trying to reconnect. Yup, that's enough. Kenji sighed while walking towards King Shark and when he finally reached there, he continued. You're the strongest opponent I've ever fought so far. He pulled back his hand and clenched it into a fist. 
Meanwhile, when King Shark was about to fight back, he saw Kenji pulling his arm back while clenching his fist with his cape fluttering behind him and King Shark saw a glimpse of his master's image overlapping with Kenji. And master, King Shark was able to mutter his last words before his head splattered into pieces. Sorry, what were you saying? Kenji thought he heard it wrong. After all, what he heard was master and calling someone who was about to kill you master than either that guy is an idiot or was actually a masochist. Kenji shakes his head, imagining King Shark being a masochist, tainting his pure mind. When Kenji turns around, he saw that the mini sharks earlier were already gone. They escaped, huh? Kenji muttered before sighing. Soon enough, after killing the boss in the dungeon, a swirling red gate appeared just a few meters away from him. It's finally finished, huh? Kenji said before continuing. Well, it's very fun while it lasts. Kenji mutters and walked toward the red gate. 19. CH18. Outside the gate, it's been a day and a half since Kenji went inside the red gate, and the Akano family was finally getting more anxious along with Bon. But before their anxiety intensifies, the red gate swirls which caused them to look at the gate in nervousness while getting ready. Either Kenji will come out or the monsters will, which means Kenji failed and died inside the dungeon. Soon, a figure slowly walked out and said, Hello there. Hannah didn't care anymore and immediately hugged her son, Kenji. Oh, Kenji, you're safe. You're finally in my arms. Hannah said while tears were falling out of her eyes. Chikashi just teared up a little before wiping it off. He's a man and a husband, and they don't cry. So he just walked and patted Kenji's shoulders and Hannah's back before hugging the both of them. Hulu, My son! You're safe. Chikashi couldn't take it anymore, and hugged them both and cried loudly. Kenji then felt someone hugging him from behind and Kane was also hugging him while she was silently crying. Guys, come on. I'm finally safe, right? Let me rest at least. Kenji wearily said to them. But too bad, his family doesn't seem to want to get off of him so he just lets them be and in the meantime, he'll just wander his eyes around just to see who are the hunters that came here. He could see some famous hunters like Yamanada Sakaguchi the Samurai, Kagura the Woven Prince, and many more. Unknown to him, what he just did will cause huge waves around the world and the title of Asia's strongest hunter will fall to him. Deciding to take this chance, Ban walked forward and bowed while speaking. I'm very sorry, Kenji Dano. You have my most sincere apology and please don't worry. Things like this won't happen because... Bon stopped for a second while staring at the remains of Shigeo. While Kenji followed his gaze and saw some pieces of flesh while the floor was painted red. Kenji could already guess what this means and who did it but still decided to ask. Who did it? Bon's eyes darted towards the back of Hannah who was hugging Kenji before sighing. It was Dash. But he was cut off. Me. Hannah said while still hugging her son. Kenji just warmly smiled and said, Though I would like to be the one to take revenge but still thank you, Mom. He hugged her back. Chikashi wiped his tears from his face before looking at Ban and saying, We'll be going home. For now, this matter will be discussed tomorrow. In the first sentence, Chikashi has a warm smile but it turns into a cold one in the last sentence. Ban just scratched the back of his head before bowing again. Yes. Please take care on your way back. Before standing straight and smiling. Chikashi just nodded at him and turns to look at Kenji, Kane, Hana, and even Shina who is standing behind but still has tear stains on her cheeks. Then there is also Iro, who was actually the leader of Firebender's Guild where hunters that specialize in fire magic can be found. He nodded at Iro, and Iro also nodded and smiled back before walking away since his job as making sure that his friend's son is safe. 
Chikashi called his family and the Tawada family before getting inside the limo followed by the rest. Soon the limo takes off and disappears in the night. Ban just stared at the car before taking off his glasses and cleaning it before muttering. I think I'll retire tomorrow. Before telling the hunters to go back to their homes before going home himself. At the Akano family mansion, Kenji was telling his parents, Kane and Shina about what he experienced inside the Red Gate. I see. Chikashi nodded before continuing. I didn't expect you to be this strong. This must be because of my genes. Ha! Chikashi laughed before getting smacked from behind by Hannah who yelled at him. It's because of my genes! You idiot! Hannah angrily pouted while Chikashi tried calming her down. Oh, of course he inherited your genes after all you're stronger than me, ha ha ha. Chikashi scratched the back of his head. Then what? Kane ignored them both and asked Kenji for the rest of the story. Then I. He continued the rest of the story and they were confused about the part where he could understand the monster and speak some unknown language. I see. Chikashi muttered while inside his mind, maybe he's also a ruler's vessel like us? But that's impossible, the rulers didn't inform me or Hannah so the answer will be. As if hit by a truck, a crazy thought appeared on his mind, perhaps he's the vessel of him? As much as Chikashi didn't want to believe but this is the only thing that went on his mind. If it's Ashborn, then he should be able to control shadows. Then he stared at Kenji's shadow and felt no being inside it. So it's really him, huh? I'll tell Hannah later but first, let's keep this a secret until he's on the right age. I think it's time to get some rest, right? Kenji, you must be tired. Let's sleep for tonight and continue this tomorrow. Chikashi said and Hannah was confused but with a stare from Chikashi, she already understood that something is going on. So they said goodnight to each other before entering their rooms. POV Ha ha ha! He's finally on the right path. A dark red being deeply laughed before getting serious. They've already set that world as their next destination. I need to hurry it up. The dark red being said before thinking of a few plans for his vessel. Aren't you gonna wake up from your slumber, friend? He then mysteriously mutters before his shadow suddenly moved a bit making him chuckle. Yeah, i wait. The dark red being said before closing his eyes. Third POV The next morning, news about the Red Gate was taking lead as the new S-rank hunter of Japan was the first hunter to ever clear an A-rank gate. Countless reporters were requesting an interview with the Akano family but so far, the Akano family just stated to wait for Japan's Hunter Association announcement which disappoints a few of them. Soon six years has passed. 16. CH-19 Kenji POV Fire Fire everywhere. I could see that I'm on top of a building, and the surrounding buildings are either destroyed or on fire. I could also hear the screams of despair of the people who were dying. I tried to escape but I noticed that my powers doesn't work anymore. Who could have done it? The one who reincarnated me? But why? That was when I heard a loud cry behind me. Father! I quickly turned around and saw my daughter Ellie on the edge of the building, holding Elijah while crying. Ellie! I shouted on top of my lungs while the smoke took the chance to invade my lungs when I breathe. Ach! Cough, cough. I coughed while still hearing Elijah crying in the background with Ellie asking for my help. I am coming! I shouted back while thinking, how did the smoke get in my lungs when I'm on top of the roof? But I decided to ignore that and save my daughter and grandson first. But suddenly, Caesar needs help. I heard his voice behind me and turns just to see Caesar also on the edge of the building while his eyes are bloodshot and had bullet wounds on his body. Caesar, I muttered weakly. 
Boom! The building I'm standing on suddenly exploded while debris fell out. I could already feel the building slowly tilting. I need to make a choice fast. Father! Help! I kept turning my head side by side until I decided to make a decision. I looked at Caesar and said, I'm sorry, Caesar. I told him weakly before turning around not wanting to hear nor see his reaction. But I still managed to glimpse at his face nodding while having the warmest smile. Oh. I shouted again and held both my daughter and grandson in my arms when suddenly. Boom. The ground we're standing on suddenly collapses, making us fall to our deaths. I could hear both of their screams and feel their fear while staring at the incoming ground. I'm sorry. I manage to mutter before everything turns black. Third POV. Inside a room, a man with a muscular but not too muscular body was sleeping while sweats were forming on his forehead while he was shaking his head side by side, while by his side was a black-haired beautiful lady with dark purple-colored lips and black fingernails who was hugging him. A.N. I'm planning on giving her the same tattoo as in the canon since she looks hot that way. Soon the man opens his eyes which were glowing dark red before closing them again and sighing in relief. It's been six years since the Red Gate incident, and it was also that day that he dreamt that dream. It just randomly keeps repeating itself, and he doesn't even care anymore since the first time he experienced that dream was also the time he learned how to fly. Now he could be called a certified superman. After all, have you seen a superman that doesn't fly? The first thing he did was to remove himself from the hug and went to the bathroom. It's been 21 years since he's here in this world. Every day his strength keeps on increasing to the point that he doesn't bother counting the tons he could lift anymore. Many things have happened during these years. First of all, his relationship with Kane was discovered by his parents just this last year. It was because Kane sneakily entered his room and hugged him throughout the night, and when Kenji's parents came to his room to wake him up, they saw Kane hugging him like a koala and they just assumed that Kenji and Kane are a couple. Since then, after discovering their secret, Kane has been sneaking up to him every night until he finally allowed her to sleep beside him. Now you must be wondering how could Kane sneak up on him, right? Well, that night was also the night he dreamt that dream for the second time. So that day the family went on a vacation to the Philippines, Borke, to celebrate their relationship and this is where they also encountered a C-rank dungeon which was cleared by Kenji, and of course with the permission of the Philippine president. Then, Kane also finally awakened her mana, allowing her to participate in his dungeon ratings. And by the way, she is also an S-rank hunter like him so the whole of Japan was cheering for having another S-rank hunter. And also, when she goes into puberty, she starts liking the purple color to the point that she even uses purple lipstick and purple fingernails and most of her clothes are purple colored. Then there is also Iroh who retired as a hunter and joins the family as a cook or that should what he was supposed to be called but all he ever did was just boil and serve tea, and also give some of his profound wisdom. Every year he has been doing tests on strength since his strength seemed to keep increasing. Bond didn't know whether to promote him to something higher since S rank is the highest rank that could be attained if you are a hunter. A slash N national rank hasn't been invented yet since Kamish hasn't appeared yet. That's all that has happened during the years. Hmm. While Kenji was brushing his teeth, he heard a moan on his bed and saw Kane was just about to get up but stopped when she saw him. Kane smiles and said, Good morning, Kenchan. Kenji just greeted her back before going back to the bathroom to finish brushing his teeth. Once done, Kenji felt someone sneaking up behind him, and when he knew who it was he just let her be. Ken Chan, are we gonna raid some dungeon today? Kane surprised hug him from behind before asking him directly to his ear. I don't know, but we'll visit my parents first, Kenji said while patting her head. 
It was just last year when his parents discovered his relationship that his parents asked him to live in a separate mansion with Kane with their reason as you're old enough already, you don't need us anymore. Until this day, he could still hear his mother sob every night. That's why he's always visiting them every day since he felt bad for his mom. Besides, he could fly at sonic speeds, and reaching his original mansion could be done in a matter of seconds. The moment he learned how to fly, he's been doing it almost every day, not gonna lie, flying is like drugs to him. Oh, by the way, his father was invited to a meeting in America, California. Though he didn't know why California, he's gonna come with him as a bodyguard, and besides, he also wanted to visit America again. What do you think is gonna happen in America, my dear readers? 16. CH20. When are we leaving? Kenji asks while eating his dinner, he just arrived here earlier by flying with Kenne in his arms. Soon, Chikashi replied while drinking the tea that was served by Iro, who was also sipping on his favorite jasmine tea beside him. By the way, Iro, wanna come? Chikashi asked Iro, who smiled warmly at him, and replied, I think I'm gonna stay here in case something goes wrong. Thank you for the offer, though. Then went back to sipping on his tea. Ha, nothing beats a jasmine tea in a day. Iroh satisfactorily said which earned a nod from Chikashi. He's been calm these days since he starts drinking Iroh's tea. After finishing his dinner, Kenji called his manager if there is any more gates to clear. There is nothing as of today, Kenji-sama. His manager replied. I see, then just call me if there is any. I'm quite bored today. Kenji then hangs up. I'll be back, Kenji said to his dad before flying off at sonic speeds. Boom! Gusts of wind slammed Iro and Chikashi while Chikashi mutters. Was that really necessary? He then shook his head before reading a newspaper. Meanwhile, Kenji was flying up at high speeds until he finally reached space. Ever since he learned how to fly, he's been bathing close to the sun and this also feels like a drug to him. At first, he forgot to wear his Superman suit and just wears normal clothing so that day he flew back home in his birthday suit. He doesn't know what how it happens but he could breathe in space as if breathing on Earth. Is it just me? Or has the government always lied to us? Was Neil Armstrong the first guy on the moon? Kenji muttered while spreading his arms so the sunlight could shower him more. How about we confirm it? Kenji grins and flew toward the moon. Soon he reached there, and he could already feel the change in gravity compared to Earth. Well, at least the gravity one was true. He mutters and walked around the moon. I'll try to find that flag and footprint. Kenji grins and blasts out at sonic speeds. From the outside perspective, Kenji was so fast that he's just a blur, but in Kenji's perspective, everything just slows down. Hmm, I wonder where is it? Kenji mutters while looking around. It's been half an hour, and he still can't find it, so Kenji just calls it a day and went home. On the earth, a kid who was licking an ice cream suddenly saw a shooting star passing. Shooting star! The kid yelled in excitement before stating his wish. I wish mama could give me more ice creams! The kid said in sadness. Unknown to him, the shooting star suddenly changed directions and charged toward him. The shooting star suddenly collided on the ground near him making him close his eyes due to sudden outbursts of the wind. What ice cream do you want? The figure was suddenly revealed to be Kenji who was patting his cloth. It's you! The one on T.V. The kid suddenly says while smiling showing his incomplete teeth. You know me? I mean I know I'm famous. Kenji scratched the back of his head. The strongest S-rank hunter, right? The kid said while getting closer to Kenji. Strongest? Since when did that happen? Kenji confusedly said. 
I don't know, my classmates just said that you're the strongest and that they wanted to be like you because unlike other hunters you are also a hero because you're also fighting criminals. The kid excitedly said while already clutching his cloth. Ah, I see. It was that time, huh? Kenji suddenly remembers when he saw someone being mugged on the streets, and he came to save the day. Since then, he's been going out around saving people in his free time. To be honest, he doesn't know the reason for this thing, he just suddenly had the urge to save people. Must be a Superman thingy. Kenji mutters before paying his attention back to the kid who was looking at him expectantly. What's your name? And where's your mom, kid? Kenji crouched and asked the kid. Hearing Kenji's question, the kid bows his head down while tears escaped from his eyes. Whoa, whoa, kid, why did you suddenly cry? Kenji was a bit shocked and asked the kid. I don't want to go home. Papa's always hurting me. The kid suddenly said while wiping his eyes due to his tears. What do you mean by that? Kenji said with a bit of coldness. If there is something he hates then that is hurting an innocent kid. In this world, children will always be the most innocent in the world since they haven't been tainted yet by bad influence. Are evil people born evil or made? If this question is asked to him, then his answer will be made. Everyone starts as an innocent, while our destiny at such a young age is carved by those people around us. No one is born evil, they are made. They say that our choices are what make us either a bad or good person. But to him, that is wrong, we make our choices based on what our mindset is, and our mindset is influenced by the people that have been around us since we're young. So it is not wrong to say that the parents will always be blamed for whatever their son slash daughter do since they are the one who stays the longest. Every day, whenever Papa comes home drunk, he will always hit me and Mommy. The kid says while looking down. Where's your home, kid? Kenji coldly asks. Why? Mama said to not trust strangers. The kid told him. Kenji warmly smiles at this. It seems like his mother is a decent one. He then replied, Am I a stranger to you? No. You're my hero. The kid excitedly replied before holding his hand and continuing. Come. I'll take you to my home. The kid dragged Kenji until they reached a dilapidated house that is almost on the verge of collapsing. Mama. I'm back. Look at who I've brought. He said he'll save us from Papa. The kid excitedly said while reaching a room and Kenji saw a woman with countless bruises on her body while her forehead is bleeding. Mama? The kid stopped in his tracks and fearfully said, Mama! The kid suddenly runs and touched his mother while trying to wake her up. Mama! Wake up! The kid said while tears were slowly forming in his eyes. D don't leave me. The kid cannot stop his tears anymore and cried. Kid, I'll take your mother to a hospital. Come with me. Kenji suddenly has flashbacks of what he is seeing. He suddenly remembers when his mother died alone on her bed while his father is in the war. He just got home that day to tell his mother that he joined the army, but he didn't even manage to say goodbye. He cried that night. Even when he is older, he'll always think about how his mother died in pain not because she died but because she died without her family near her. He could imagine how hurt his mother must have been. He was also hurt that day, and he doesn't want this kid to experience the same. So he carefully carried the kid's mother before saying, You'll be alright. Kid grabbed me. The kid did as he was told and climbed on his back and hugged his neck. Kenji then jumped through the window and flew off at high speeds. I know this feels unnecessary, but this is for his character development. By the way, the kid is just an OC. 13. CH21 Soon, Kenji arrived at the hospital and handed the mother to the nurses and doctors. After arriving here, 
flashes of cameras has been flashing continuously which annoys him so he just grabbed the kid and walked to a corner. The kid just kept crying on the way here which irritates him a bit but he still endures. After walking to the corner, Kenji turns around and crouched, facing the kid, and then said, Don't worry kid, she'll be alright. She's in good hands now. The kid stopped crying and asked him, Really? Kenji just smiles and nodded. By the way, what's your name? Kenji asked him while patting his head. Haru! When Haru was about to introduce himself, an angry voice was heard through the hallways. Kenji frowns and looked at the obese man who was sweating heavily while wearing a white coat that is usually worn by doctors. Is that his father? So his father is a doctor but their home earlier was dilapidated. As far as I know, doctor has a high-paying salary. Kenji mused before seeing the man raising his hand and was about to slap Haru. Kenji immediately steps in and held the man's hand and said, Mister, you can't just slap a kid who can't even defend himself. The man's anger exploded and yelled, I'm his father. I have the right to educate my own child. Get out of the way. The man tried to push Kenji, but Kenji doesn't budge even an inch. Has my fame not famous enough for this man to not know me? Kenji mused in his mind while chuckling at the man's attempts to push him. The man heard his chuckle and it didn't end up well. Do you not know who I am? The man started making a fuss like a young master. No. You. The man can't take it anymore and was about to end his fucking life when he was about to slap Kenji. But lucky for him, Haru stepped in and hugged his father's thigh while crying. Oh, Tasan! Please stop. You stupid kid! You're lucky I'm your father. Many ladies back in the day has to line up just to ask me for a date. You and your mother are lucky that I chose her. The father started rambling like an idiot attracting unwanted attention from the surroundings. Haru kept crying while hugging his father's thigh making his father shake his leg to get him off. Ayanada! Haru! They heard a female hoarse voice. They all turned their heads to the source and saw the mother was standing there with a pale face while using the walls as a support to stand. Keika san Haru lets go of the father's thighs and run toward his mother and hugs her thighs. Haru! The mother hugged him back while trying to hold her tears in order to not show her weakness in front of her child. HMPF, you're finally awake! The father haughtily said while crossing his arms. Why you shall. The mother scaredly said while pushing her son behind her to protect him in case he did something. All this time, she didn't even notice Kenji standing just beside her. He's Chinese? No wonder Haru looks a bit Chinese and seeing that his father is a doctor is not shocking anymore since I heard that many Chinese parents want their children to be successful doctors. Kenji mused in his mind. Do you know how much trouble you're gonna cause me by going to the hospital, Mari? The father who was identified as Yu Xiao angrily said making Mari flinch in fear. I'm sorry I didn't know Dash. Mari tried to apologize but suddenly a hand patted her shoulder making her look behind her in shock. You don't need to apologize to someone like him, ma'am. Kenji told her while coldly staring at Yu Xiao who shivers in fear. Why you are? Mari said in shock while staring at Kenji seemingly recognizing him. To people like him, we should show no mercy. Kenji slowly walked towards Yu Xiao who was backing away in fear. Why you step back? Yu Xiao warns while grabbing a nearby scalpel and using it to threaten him. Kenji kept walking toward him while he backs away until they were outside the hospital and a crowd formed around them. Seeing that Kenji is not stopping and he can't step back anymore, Yu Xiao decided to commit a crime right here and now. He stopped stepping back and runs toward Kenji while using both of his hands to stab Kenji in his chest, mainly where his heart resides. Ting! Yu Xiao can't believe what he is seeing. 
He saw the scalpel bending on its side while Kenji's clothing doesn't even have a scratch. Hunter. That's the only thing that runs on Yu Zhao's mind. Only a hunter could block a scalpel unscratched. Are you done? Kenji asks in disappointment. Well, what did he expect? Yu Xiao immediately kneeled on the ground and begged for his life. Daddy! No, Grandpa! Please spare this pitiful dog. Kenji raised his eyebrows at his state. Tell me, why did you abuse them? Kenji was a bit curious, so he asks. Yu Xiao hesitates for a bit, but then, remembering that he's walking on a thin line of life or death, he decided to tell the truth. I it's because she gave birth to a male kid. I promised someone that I'll marry my child to his child to make connections but my child turns out to be a boy while it is also the same to him so he breaks our contract since I can't fulfill the deal. Yu Xiao explained. So you're trying to sell your child to some connections? Kenji was a bit shocked but not shocked enough since he knew that almost every rich family is using this style to expand their connections. You should have used Nuro Hikari for a stronger connection. Kenji shakes his head and grabs Yu Zhao's collar before continuing. Here, I'll bring you to a strong connection. He then used his strength to throw Yu Xiao up in the air. Eh? That were Yu Zhao's last words before he was thrown up into space until he disappeared on the horizon. Everybody who was watching the scandal was shocked by Kenji's strength and what he had just done. This will surely take over the breaking news and the front page tomorrow. I repeat, I know this feels unnecessary but this is for his character development. By the way, the kid is just an OC. 13. CH-22 After throwing the man into the space, Kenji's phone rings in his pocket. Ring ring ring. Kenji took out his phone and answered. Kenji speaking. Ah. Uh, Kenji, where are you? I'm about to meet the American president. His father Chikashi was the one who answered back. President? You didn't tell me we're gonna meet the president. Kenji confusedly asks. Ah, uh, I think I just forgot to tell you. Anyway, hurry up, the president's waiting. Chikashi informed him before hanging up. Kenji put his phone back in his pocket before walking inside the hospital. He saw Haru smiling and chatting with Mari who just quietly listens to him. When he went inside, Haru was the first to notice him. Ah. Uh, it's Superman. Haru pointed to him which makes Mari also notice him. Mari stands up and tried to bow to him. T thank you dash. But Kenji stops her and said. Please no need to bow. I just did what others would also do when someone saw you in that state. Mari heard him and tears slowly escaped her eyes. Still, please let me thank you. She slightly bows but since she insists, he just stayed still. Anyway, would you like a ride back to your home? I'll just fly you over. Kenji offers them which was rejected immediately by Mari. Please. You've done enough for us. Mari rejected while shaking her head. I see. Anyway, I need to go. If you need help, just call me. Kenji then handed her his card before walking away. Kenji still heard her mutter a thank you again before flying at sonic speeds. Kenji's direction is America. So he flew there for a few seconds before hearing a beeping sound. While up in the air, Kenji looked behind him and saw a projectile following him while beeping. On his side, a jet plane emerged while Kenji heard the pilot speaking through the speakers. Unidentified flying person, I'll warn you, you are trespassing America without legal means. We are warning you to stop what you are doing. The pilot warns him through the speaker. What? Wait a second. Kenji talked back before taking out his phone. Hold. Put your hands in the air. Drop whatever you are holding. 
The pilot immediately warns him, while Kenji could see that the pilot is already locked into him. It's just my phone! Kenji shouted. He's not mad. He knew that the pilot was just doing his job. The pilot doesn't speak anymore but still follows him. He must be talking to his superiors. Have they already recognized me? Kenji mused in his mind while calling his father. Son! Did I hear that you just trespassed by flying? I already told the president, and they're currently working on it. Chikashi answered and spoke. Yeah, I can see that. Kenji replied while looking at the jet plane that just quietly flew away. Soon enough, Kenji arrived at the White House and was immediately met by the president himself along with a muscular man who Kenji knew very well, some hunters, a few politicians, and finally his father. I knew my suspicions were right. After all, father is just a senator how could he have the privilege to schedule a meeting with the U.S. president? Kenji mused to himself. He first greeted his father, and then the president before greeting the rest. Why do you even need me here? Kenji whispered to Chikashi. Well, you'll be my guard during our stay here. Chikashi replied to him while they were walking back to the White House. Kenji nodded he didn't mind it. After all, he is his father, and protecting him is part of his job as a son. After a few agonizing hours of politics, by the way, he was included in the meeting which he didn't know why. After the meeting, his father was chatting with the president, while Kenji was on the corner watching everyone in the room. You must be Kenji. Kenji then heard a man's voice speaking English. Yes, and you are? Kenji replied with a fluent accent shocking the man a bit. Oh, please forgive my manners, my name is Thomas Andre. Thomas then offered his hand to him. Kenji accepted it with no problem while introducing himself. Nice to meet you, Andre-san. My name is Akano Kenji. Kenji smiles at the strength of Thomas when he gripped his hand. Thomas smiled back before speaking. How about I introduce you to a few of my guildmates? Kenji nodded and accepted his offer. Soon they left the room and reached another room where Kenji could see a few hunters talking to each other. Everyone, this is Kenji. Introduce yourselves. Thomas introduced him before leaving while his guild mates introduced themselves to him. Soon Thomas came back holding a bottle of wine. This is a Romani Conti wine. Let's have a drink. Soon Thomas poured him a glass of wine and offered it to him. Kenji drank it without hesitation. Even if it has anything poisonous, Kenji knew that his body is immune to all kinds of poison or drugs. Five minutes have passed chatting with Thomas about a few things like gates, monsters or their culture, likes and hobbies. Thomas may look like a mafia boss on the outside, but Kenji discovered that Thomas has a soft spot for plants and flowers. No wonder he's wearing a shirt and pants full of flowers, Kenji thought to himself. While they were chatting, the whole room suddenly lit in red while alarms were ringing around the White House. Thomas and the rest suddenly stood up and run off. Thomas stayed for a bit and said to Kenji, Something must have happened. It's probably a dungeon outbreak. Then he continued, Follow me. Kenji nodded and followed him outside where he can see hunters preparing their gear. Out of all the places in the world, why are they preparing in the White House? Kenji confusedly asked himself. Kenji! Come, a dungeon outbreak has appeared near here. Shikashi called out to him. Kenji nodded and was about to reach out to him when suddenly, an explosion occurred in the White House alerting everyone. Roar! They heard a loud roar and everyone, even his father, Chikashi froze in fear. Kenji noticed that he and Thomas were the only ones that is not affected so they decided to rush outside to take a look at the situation. When both of them were finally outside, they saw fires everywhere, destroyed buildings, and finally, a huge red-scaled dragon decimating everything on its path. A dragon? 
Kenji said to himself while staring at the dragon who was spitting fires everywhere. Kenji could even see some hunters trying to stop the dragon but all of them were burned to a crisp. Let's go, Thomas said to him while removing his sunglass with a serious look on his face. Yeah, let's stop it. Kenji grins and agreed. 14. CH23. Third POV. W, we can't stop it. One of the S rank hunters who came to stop the raging dragon yelled in fear. They've lost five S rank hunters, seven A rank, and seventeen B rank hunters from the monstrous dragon. I is this is the end? A hunter trembled in fear while his grip on his staff loses strength, making his staff fall to the ground. Clack clack x25. Soon others followed and they lost hope of defeating this monster when suddenly, they heard a sonic sound coming their way. Asterisk boom. Asterisk. The dragon, that was causing fear and destruction everywhere was flung by the sonic sound. Boom. The dragon flew back while damaging some buildings before touching the ground. W who was it? A hunter woke up from shock and stuttered while staring at the figure surrounded by thick smoke. Soon the smoke dispersed and reveals Kenji in his full glory while steam was coming out of his fist. T that's Akano Kenji from Japan! One of the hunters immediately recognized him and shouted his identity. Kenji? The strongest hunter of Asia? A hunter also recognized him. Superman also known as Akano Kenji was Asia's strongest hunter not because he defeated Lu Gang, the former strongest hunter of Asia, but because the title was given to him due to being the first hunter to clear an A-rank dungeon alone and having the most A-rank dungeons cleared during his career as a hunter. The name, Superman was given to him due to doing something that other hunters didn't and that is fighting criminals and saving people. He was admired by kids, teens, adults, and the elderly, many people wanted to be like him, and he was an inspiration to everyone. Everyone, retreat! Kenji shouted at them. He knew that they can't defeat the dragon. He felt it when he punched. It was as if he just punched wood without Superman's powers. The hunters listened to him obediently. This is not the time to be angry at being ordered at. Once he saw that they were retreating, Kenji, Turns around just in time to see the dragon standing up with red menacing eyes. Ready for more? Kenji grins while cracking his knuckles which caused loud sounds. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
making the dragon annoyed. I commend you for your will and strength, human. What is your name? The dragon, for the first time, spoke in monster language. Thank you for the compliment, and shouldn't you introduce yourself first? Kenji replied in the same monster language. At first he tried to learn the language by speaking with monsters whenever he do raids, but it seems to be impossible, and whenever he want to talk to a monster, the monster language just came naturally to him. You're really a weird human. You could also speak our language that no human shall possess. Fine, I'll introduce myself first. Hear me out, human. The dragon started to puff up his chest and continued. My name is Kamish. I see, then my name is Akano Kenji. It was Kenji's turn to introduce himself, and so he did. I see, your name is Akano Kenji, very well, I shall remember this name deep in my soul and shall remember it even if I die. Kamish proudly yelled before continuing. Then let us continue our battle. Kamish suddenly flapped his wings which caused huge amounts of airwaves and appeared in front of Kenji's vision. With Kamish's mouth open, ready to bite Kenji to death. Kenji wasn't even scared a bit. He just let Kamish close his mouth once he is inside. However, suddenly, Kamish seemed to notice that he can't close his mouth. That was when he noticed that Kenji who was inside was using both of his hands to hold his palate while his feet are on his tongue. Kamish scoffed at this attempt and decided to release flames from his mouth. Kenji noticed that Kamish's tongue was getting redder and hotter. It was then he noticed that Kamish was actually releasing flames. But Kenji didn't care, so he let the flames engulf him inside Kamish's mouth. At first, Kamish thought that he won by turning Kenji into a crisp when suddenly he heard him say, That's kinda hot. Kenji chuckled then stomped his feet strong enough to break Kamish's jaw. Kamish doesn't have the time to be shocked when he suddenly felt pain in his jaw. Kenji then flew outside of his mouth and stared at Kamish, roaring in pain. It hurts, isn't it? Kenji told him. He also felt that pain. It was that time during the war that he tripped in the middle of war while his jaw was crushed because his jaw fell on a rock. His tongue and teeth bled furiously that day. Sigh, good old days. Kenji sighed while reminiscing his past, forgetting the dragon who was glaring daggers at him. 14. CH24 What's the status? A general asks while staring at the night sky. Sir, from our observations, Superman is fighting against the monster up in the sky. A soldier reported on his side. I see. Do you think we could provide any support? The general solemnly asks. As for right now, we cannot, sir. They should be fighting at least 30,000 feet up in the sky, and we currently have no hunter who could fly that high. The soldier replied. I see, then the least we can do is evacuate everyone around the vicinity. Make sure you prioritize the safety of civilians first. The general ordered before leaving with a sigh. He's already 70 years old. He missed the day when the only threat in the world are guns but ever since the gate appeared, guns and bombs have been rendered useless. Sir, yes sir. The soldier saluted and left to do what he was ordered. While Kenji was fighting Kamish, Thomas just arrived in the place of destruction and saw many soldiers evacuating and rescuing civilians. Suddenly, Thomas felt explosions up in the air which caused him to look in the sky just in time to see the silhouettes of Kenji and Kamish fighting with each other. The sky. Thomas muttered and threw the cigarette that he was holding. Reinforcement. Thomas muttered and he was then covered in good shining armor from head to toe. Ruler's authority. He then used one of his skills called ruler's authority which allows him telekinetically move objects with his mind. He used the skill on himself and levitated toward Kenji and Kamish. The other soldiers also saw this and were excited on seeing the S-rank hunter in action. It's they haven't seen hunters fight. It's just that S-rank hunters rarely move. Soon, with ruler's authority, 
Thomas reached them just in time to see Kenji punch in Kamish's face. Boom! I'm amazed, Thomas said with a shocked face, letting his presence known. Kamish looked at him and was shocked on feeling a familiar aura on this human and the skill he is using. I didn't expect I'd see a ruler's vessel this early, Kamish spoke in monster language. Thomas just kept quiet and didn't say anything and directly attacked. Kamish, seeing Thomas's offense, decided to defend himself by swinging his tail towards Thomas. Thomas, seeing this, crossed his arms to defend himself. Boom! Due to Kamish's superior strength, Thomas was thrown away like a bug but he managed to stop himself in time using ruler's authority. His forearms are bleeding, and his bones are shattered but in no time, he slowly healed. On the sidelines, Kenji huffed. He didn't want to be a bystander so he decided to attack Kamish with his laser eyes. Meanwhile, Kamish felt something hot penetrating his scales, directly hitting his flesh. Graph! Kamish moaned in pain and looked behind him and saw Kenji with glowing dark red eyes. Kenji continued his assault and released hot beams again towards Kamish's body. Sizzle. Due to the intensity of Kenji's hot beams, Kamish's flesh was almost cooked, which smelled like bacon. Smells bacon. Kenji spoke in monster language and grins. Kamish felt insulted and ignored Thomas and spew a sea of flames toward Kenji. That won't work, Kenji reminded him and just let the sea of fire engulf him again. Kamish knew that this isn't enough to injure Kenji, so after spewing flame from his mouth, he directly dashed toward Kenji and was about to slash him with his claws when suddenly, he felt as if someone was pulling him away. He turns around and saw Thomas with glowing orange eyes with his hands forward, using ruler's authority, capture, to pull Kamish to him. Kamish was helpless and was pulled by him. Once Kamish was close to him, Thomas closed his fist and punched Kamish on his forehead. Boom! Kamish felt a little bit dizzy and roared in anger but was cut off when Kenji held his tail behind. No! Not my tail! Kamish sweated and yelled at Kenji. But Kenji didn't care about him and spun him around, forming wind blasts everywhere. Yuk. Yuk. Yuk X100. Once Kenji noticed that he is spinning fast enough, he let go of his tail, throwing Kamish away from them. Meanwhile, Kenji immediately chased after him, leaving Thomas behind. Meanwhile, Kamish, who already has spinning eyes and a foaming mouth due to dizziness, was already regretting letting himself be controlled by the rulers. The truth is, he didn't even want to be here, but the rulers controlled him and ordered him to cause destruction here. But while he was fighting earlier with Kenji, he felt something familiar within him, but he didn't know what it is. One thing for sure is that Kenji was a bit abnormal, especially that strength of his. Yo! Kamish suddenly heard a voice on his side. He turned his head to his side and saw his greatest nightmare. Kamish immediately used his wings to stop himself in his tracks. Kenji also stopped and looked at Kamish, who was staring back at him. You're very strong, Kenji. If only I wasn't controlled by them, then maybe we could have been friends. But let us end this now. Kamish spoke to him for the last time before attacking Kenji. Kenji also didn't say anything. He would also like to end this right now. He's quite hungry from all this fight. Kamish was already in front of him, with his jaw wide open, ready to bite him off. Meanwhile, Kenji just backed away and grabbed one of Kamish's horns. Then he pulled him towards him and kneed his forehead with enough force to decimate a city. Ever since he became Superman, he has been holding back a lot in order to not hurt everyone close to him. Kamish felt a strong painful force traveling from his head to his tail, destroying every flesh of his, while shaking his organs. Graph Dash 
Kanish was about to yell in pain when he suddenly felt someone just punch his jaw forcing his mouth to shut in pain. From the outside perspective, one can see a dragon with his head jerked upward in the air due to Kenji's strong punch. Then Kenji's eyes glowed in red and hot beams of laser flew from his eyes and penetrated Kamish's weakened body. Kamish felt pain all over his body like never before, and when he was about to retaliate despite the pain, he saw Kenji appearing in front of his vision, with his fists closed and ready to punch him. I'm finally F.R.E. Dash. When he was about to finish his last words, Kenji's fist finally reached his head. Asterisk boom. Asterisk. Due to the intensity of Kenji's punch, intense airwaves were wreaking havoc in the surroundings. Sorry, what were you saying? Kenji once again missed what was his enemy's last words. 14. CH 25. Once Kenji was sure that the dragon was dead, he went and carried Kamish from his tail and flew back. Once he arrived, Kenji could see countless hunters helping and patrolling around the area with serious looks on their faces. Suddenly, their faces lose color when they saw that Kamish was back, and when they were about to get ready when someone pointed out to Kenji, and they saw that he was carrying Kamish from his tail. They all sighed in relief that they won't have to fight once again. This day has been a huge loss to them, not only because of the civilian casualties and property damage, but also because they lost tens of S-rank hunters this day. Right on this day, Kamish will be declared as humanity's greatest calamity. When Kenji went down and gently lie Kamish's body on the ground, he went and meet his father who immediately used his ability to heal Kenji. Dad, I'm fine. Kenji just casually said while flexing his biceps. I don't care. If your mother finds out that you have even a slight injury, I'll sleep on the couch again tonight. Chikashi told him while healing him with a very serious look, making Kenji chuckle. Soon, Thomas along with the U.S. president came to him to give their thanks for saving the U.S. Kenji just casually accepted their gratitude but the U.S. president said something that piques his interest. From the reports I've heard, that monster was the first monster to kill tens of S-ranks since the gate surfaced. The president said while gazing his eyes upon the ruins that were caused by Kamish. And I also saw that you were the only one who could contend with that monster with ease, and that is why I'm thinking of a new hunter rank. Something higher than S-rank. The president mumbled while thinking about the new rank that he'll introduce. I think. I'll call it national rank. The president clapped and told them before continuing. Tomorrow morning, I'll have a meeting with other leaders and we'll talk about this matter if you would please attend the meeting tomorrow. Or are you perhaps busy? The president asked Kenji with please tell me you're not busy evidently plastered on his face. Kenji who just heard the president turns to look at his father. He's only here as his father's bodyguard. Chikashi saw his look and nodded, there's no harm to it anyway, in fact, it also has many benefits to it. Kenji nodded back at him and turns to the president and nodded again, making the president smile in happiness. Kenji then turns to Thomas who was grinning. You're very strong, much stronger than me. He then presents his hand forward, looking for a shake. Kenji nodded. The same can be said to you, no normal hunters could take that attack. Thomas's grin widened when he heard Kenji. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Thomas said his farewell and placed his hands in his pocket, and left along with the president. Kenji just stares at him leave and also left the place, followed by his father. Back to Thomas, he was having a chat with the president. I just heard what he said, do you also manage to contend with the monster? The president asks him, making Thomas chuckle. Well, I managed to hold my ground against it, Thomas told him, making the president fall into deep thinking and finally open his mouth. Do you also want to be promoted to national rank? The president asks him, making Thomas stop in his tracks. Of course I want. Who could refuse such an enticing offer? 
Thomas smiled and said before resuming his walk. However, suddenly he heard a very familiar voice. Boya? Is the battle finished already? But I just arrived here. Thomas looked at the source and saw a very familiar face, wearing Chinese armor and a beautifully carved spear. You're late. Superman went and finished it. Thomas said to the former strongest hunter of Asia. H.M. him again? That's bad. I also want to fight a strong monster, you know? Lu Jigang, the former strongest of Asia, playfully said while resting his spear on his shoulder. Soon, they also heard footsteps and saw another familiar face. What happened? Where's the monster? Christopher Reed, another hunter of America. It's already dead. Both of you are late. Thomas informed him. Who was it? Chris asked confusedly. It was the hunter in Japan, Superman. Thomas told him and continued. Anyway, I'll leave the both of you. I have a few matters to take care of. He then walked away leaving the two hunters. Chris then turns at Lou who smiles and waves at him, making Chris turn his head by the side. Humph. Then also walked away, since the fight is already done, he has no purpose staying here. Lou was still playfully waving at him, and once he is done, he mutters. Superman, huh? He then smiles and also left the scene. Back to Kenji, he's currently in the bathroom, staring at himself in the mirror. He felt that there is much more than hunters and monsters in this world, he can't help but feel as if someone is watching him. Rulers Kenji mutters, ever since he heard his father, talking about rulers, he has been curious ever since. It was a few years back, he was training his hearing when he heard his father talk about rulers. He felt really familiar when he heard the word rulers and he tried searching in Google about the rulers and all he got was the actual ruler that is used as a measuring. This time, he's planning on facing his father about this since he felt that Kamish was somehow related to the rulers. After he brushed his teeth and take a bath, he went outside and saw his father on the table typing on his laptop. Dad, can we talk? Kenji asks him. Chikashi stared at him for a second and nodded. Of course, let's talk in the living room. He stands and closed the laptop before walking toward the living room. Kenji also followed him, and once they are in the living room, they both sat on the couch facing each other while Chikashi asks. So, what do you want to talk about? Kenji didn't hesitate and said, What is a ruler? Kenji stares at his father's shocked face when he heard what he just said. Sai, I knew I can't hide it from you for a long time. Chikashi sighed and finally decided to tell his son the truth. 12. CH26 Guys, please drop some good reviews after reading, thank you. Chikashi then proceeded to tell him about the rulers and monarchs and also about their never-ending war. Kenji just quietly listened to him. Sometimes shock will appear on his face while also asking him questions about things he didn't understand. And that's when the rulers finally defeat the monarchs, while the monarchs went into hiding. After Chikashi was done, silence ensued in the room. Who are the monarchs? Kenji broke the silence by asking a question that has been bugging him off. Chikashi stares at him for a few seconds before sighing. I don't know any monarchs, but I know three monarchs that the rulers warned me about. Who are they? When Kenji heard him, he pushed his body forward with interest in his eyes. The first one is the Dragon Monarch, also known as Monarch of Destruction. Then there is also the Shadow Monarch, and finally, the most mysterious of all monarchs is the Star Monarch. Shikashi stopped when he saw that mentioning the Star Monarch piqued his attention. He then continued. As far as everybody knows, he was a neutral monarch. He never joined the war nor participated in battles. Most thought that he was the weakest monarch so he doesn't participate so the dragon monarch came to greet him. After the dragon monarch came back, 
Everybody was shocked when he suddenly announces the Star Monarch as his equal. After he finished, Kenji fell into deep thinking. Whenever the Star Monarch was being mentioned, he felt something deep inside him reacting to it. It's like he was very familiar with this monarch, even though he knew himself that he hasn't met this monarch yet, but deep inside him, he already knew who reincarnated him here. As for why does he know? Call it his guts, and besides, he's getting a reaction just by hearing him. Chikashi just looked at Kenji contemplating something before clearing his throat. Ahem, it's midnight already, we should get some sleep. After saying that, he quietly left the living room, leaving Kenji in his own thoughts. After thinking for a few minutes, he finally concluded that he must meet this monarch to find the answers to his questions. Soon enough, he also plopped down to his bed but not before messaging Kenne and his mom about what happened and saying his goodnight. Next day. Inside a meeting hall, the U.S. president was having his speech about the current matters and especially the humanity's greatest calamity and its horrors. Thankfully, Kenji was there in time to defeat the monstrous dragon and that's how the U.S. president suggested creating a higher rank called National Rank Hunter. Kenji was the first ever National Rank Hunter, and soon, some countries suggested their hunters be promoted to National Rank. And so only, five National Hunters candidates were chosen to participate in a test to determine whether they were worthy of the rank. After the meeting, Kenji was met by Thomas again but this time, Lu Jigang one of the national rank candidates joins them. I didn't expect I'd be chosen as a candidate. Lu Jigang, Thomas Andre, and Kenji were chatting with each other. Well, it is expected. After all, you're the former strongest hunter of Asia. Kenji followed up and chatted. Well, yeah. Soon half an hour passed, and it was time for everyone to go home. After saying his goodbyes to his new friends, Kenji instead of flying again, he boarded a private plane along with his father, of course, since he was the one WHI defeated Kamish. The U.S. president gave Kenji, Kamish's fangs and the mysterious stone that resides inside his body. This has been one eventful trip Kenji mused to himself, and chuckled slightly before staring outside the window. However, he suddenly thought about what Thomas said earlier while they were having a chat. Flashback. So, Kenji, are you planning on having your own guild? If you do create a guild, I'm sure countless hunters will rush up to you just to join. Hearing Thomas's words, Kenji falls into deep thinking. Does he still need a guild? When he alone is enough to obliterate his enemies? End of flashback. While thinking about it, he didn't notice that the plane has finally arrived back in Japan. Son, we're here. His father, Chikashi, was the one who woke him up from his thoughts. Soon they both went down the plane and once outside, they both could see, countless reporters asking him questions here and there. It seems like the travel of news is very fast. Kenji only answered a few questions while ignoring the nonsense questions like what brand of shampoo do you use? Or something else like do you have a huge dick? The last one seems like a question from a MILF reporter. Soon he also left the airport and finally arrived at his home. He didn't inform Kane of his return since he wanted to surprise her. Once he went inside, he saw that the first floor was empty and went upstairs to his room and saw what was inside. Inside his room was a sleeping Kane. But what confuses him was a rap on her shoulder. At first, Kenji was mad thinking that Kane was hurt, but he suddenly noticed a black marking on her shoulder. So he went inside the room and slowly peeled the wrapper and saw a tattoo on her shoulder. When he saw the tattoos, he saw that it looks like a burning sun or something. There is also a tattoo that catches his attention. On the back of her shoulder, Kenji? Kane was marked on her. Kenji felt warm inside and because of this, Kane woke up and saw Kenji warmly smiling at her. At first, she was confused about what was Kenji doing here. 
Then she realized that she has recently gotten a tattoo from Hannah's friend. Wait. Don't look at it. It was supposed to be a surprise gift for you. Kane immediately covered her shoulder and pouted at Kenji. Kenji just raised his eyebrows and said, Why did you get a tattoo? Seeing his raised eyebrows and a question, Kane immediately felt a bad feeling inside her. So she asks with a bit of fear and sadness, Why you didn't like it? By saying this, tears were already forming in her eyes and were attempting to fall out. Kenji who saw this felt bad for her, he was just concerned for her since he saw it himself back in his previous world. There's this guy who has full body tattoos and almost all people were avoiding him. Although there are pros and cons to having a tattoo, it might lead to some people looking down at her. There is also some risk like infections or something like that, but he is not against her tattoo, he was just worried for her. Seeing that Kenji was silent for a few minutes, Kane was already regretting having a tattoo, she almost felt like slapping herself for not asking her boyfriend's permission first. When she was about to apologize and find a way to remove the tattoo, she suddenly heard Kenji's warm words. It's beautiful. She raised her head and saw Kenji looking at her lovingly, and she suddenly tears up and hugged him. However, ow, ow, ow. Because of a sudden hug, her tattoos rubbed with Kenji's clothes leading to her pain. Kenji was also worried so instead of hugging her, he just kissed her forehead and hugged her head to his muscular chest. That day, they both felt closer than ever. 11. CH 27. Morning has come. Kenji who was sleeping with Kane in his arms slowly opens his eyes and what greeted him was the sunlight escaping from the curtains. Slowly, he got out of bed and went to the bathroom to brush his teeth. Then he went and took a bath before walling downstairs to cook breakfast for him and Kane. Soon, he finished cooking breakfast which consists of tamago cake gohan, miso soup, and ohitashi. A slash n. I'm clueless about Japanese breakfast, so I just searched on Google. Meanwhile, Kane was already awake and was just brushing her teeth after taking a bath. Once she went downstairs, she saw that Kenji was almost done preparing the dishes on the table. Kenji also saw her. Good morning, sleepyhead. He smiled and continued. Breakfast is ready, come sit. Kane smiled feeling a bit warm inside her heart. Soon she also sat down, and they both ate their breakfast in bliss. Once they finished eating, they both cuddled on the couch while Kenji started a conversation. I've been thinking. I think I should start my own guild. What do you think? Kenji said. Kane brought her slender fingers up to her chin and fell into thinking. Kenji just kept quiet and waited for Kane's response. A few seconds later, Kane finally spoke. I think you should, but I'll join. Is that okay with you? Kenji immediately replied when he heard her. Of course, I was already planning on inviting you. Kenji nodded and agreed. Kane was also happy, but then she asked. So, what'll be the name of our guild? Kenji then realized that he hadn't thought of the guild name yet. Uh, Justice League? Kenji asked her, after all, he is Superman then the name should be Justice League, right? Kane just stared at him while raising her eyebrows. Really? That's a lame name. Kenji sighed and fell into thinking. A few seconds later, he clapped his hands and said, Ha! Huh. Krypton Guild. Kane this time looked at him in contempt. What's with you and your lame naming sense? They both quieted and only the moving hands of the clock can be heard throughout the living room. How about? Once Kane started speaking, Kenji stopped himself in his thoughts and waited for Kane to finish. Asahi Guild! Kane excitedly said and stared at him. Kenji was just happy at seeing her smile and unconsciously agreed. Sure. That's a cool name. 
Kenji nodded and felt the name was just right. Uma. Uma. Kane also nodded and felt happy that her boyfriend agreed with her. So, when are you gonna register our guild? Kane asked him. Hmm, I think I'll do it tomorrow. Today, I'll spend my time with you. Then he went and hugged her tightly while sniffing her delicate neck. Kane just giggled and also hugged him tightly. A slash in. If you're just gonna hate me just because of this then just go and fuck yourself. Soon, an hour has passed with just the both of them cuddling with each other on the couch. They then decided to watch some movies and turned on the power of the television, and they were greeted by the news about a dungeon appearing in Kyoto. Since the dungeon was being handled by some hunters, Kenji changed the channel and finally found a good movie. With just that, they watched some movies for a whole day. Though there is one thing that Kenji realized, is that the movies in this world are quite good but the masterpieces back from his world are missing. Kenji thought of plagiarizing some masterpieces from his world to this world. But Kenji decided to set this matter aside for now and focus on his current life. Maybe if he has time he'll publish some movies here like Harry Potter or something. Once they finished a movie, Kenji asked something that put a smile on Kenny's face. Let's have a date. Kenji uttered which Kenny smiled and agreed with him. When? Kenny asked since she was getting excited. Kenji just chuckled at her excitement and said to her, Saturday, be ready. Once he said that, Kenji looked at Kane and winked at her. Kane giggled and finally, both of them got tired of watching movies and went to bed. Soon, a day passed and Kenji was already wearing a formal suit while Kane was fixing his tie. Although he could do it, having her fix his tie made it feel like they are husband and wife. Once that is done, Kenji pecked her on her lips and said his farewell to her and left. Kenji then hopped on his black Draco GT car and drove off the mansion. On his way to the gate, he could see some patrolling guards saluting at him when they saw his car. Back to Kane, once she saw that Kenji was already gone, she decided to go to the gym and spend her time training or raid some dungeons if someone called. Sometimes, she felt a bit useless due to Kenji's power. Just this month, they both sparred and although she could show off some moves, she could see and feel that Kenji was holding back. She didn't know whether she should be happy that her boyfriend is such a force to be reckoned with or should she be sad because she can't keep up with him in their dungeon raids. So this time, she decided to up her training and raid some more dungeons to keep up with her lover. With this goal set on her mind, she unhurriedly walked to the gym to train her ass off. Meanwhile, Kenji has finally arrived at the Japan Hunters Association. Currently, he's having a chat with Ban, talking about the registering of his guild. So, aside from yourself, have you decided on a member? I can recommend some lone hunters to you. Ban chatted with Kenji. He was excited that Kenji was finally creating his own guild instead of soloing A-rank dungeons, sometimes with his girlfriend. Kenji nodded and told him, my girlfriend will be the first member, as for the rest, I think I'll think about it in a few days. After that, it is time to proceed to the registration of the guild under the name of Asahi Guild, meaning Rising Sun or Morning Sun. Kenji felt that this name that Kane suggested is really suitable for his guild since his source of power is the sun. Finally, Kenji has created his own guild. I think I'll do some very small time skips until we arrived at the cannon. Who knows, maybe recruit Sung Jin Wu into his guild. 13. CH 28. After registering his guild, it was time to go home. After getting inside his car, the car blared in the engine and finally drove off. It took 15 minutes to arrive back home, due to traffic. Finally, he drove his car to the garage and went inside his house and found that no one is in the living room. Kenji used his x-ray vision and looked around the house and finally found Kane in the gym, practicing katas with her twin katanas. 
From Kenji's observations since Kenne awakened, her speed is her major strength. A slash N. Honestly, in the manhwa, Kenne only showed her speed, so the rest of her strength is unknown. So that's why I'll make some things up to make her qualify as an S rank. Once seeing her in the gym, Kenji didn't hesitate and also went to the gym. And there, he found her sweating heavily all over her body, making her abs glisten in sweat, which Kenji gulped. Currently, she is only wearing a sports bra, showcasing her abs and her tattoo. Kane, who was breathing heavily, noticed that someone was at the entrance of the gym, so she didn't hesitate and threw her katana toward it. Kenji obviously wasn't shocked by this. During their sparring lessons, he instructed her to always be alert and show no mercy to her opponents. Back to Kenji. Kenji easily caught the tip of her katana in the middle of her fingers. That's good, always be aller dash dot. He didn't even manage to finish his sentence when Kane was already in front of him with her katana ready to cut him down. Kenji saw that she was grinning while staring at him. Kenji smirked at seeing her like this again. Whenever they fight, Kane always felt pleasure in fighting Kenji since his body is immune to her physical attacks so she could go all out whenever she wants. Kenji knew this side of her, and instead of hating it, he even loves her for it. No, not because he is a masochist or something, he doesn't know what it is called but it goes something like he loves her more because she is showing her true nature which is a battle-thirsty woman. Kenji was dodging all her attempts, although he could tank it, he felt that it was no fun in it, after all, it's much more fun moving your body than just standing still. Why? Won't. You. Hit. Kane was almost out of breath due to her training earlier and then fighting without resting, so it's pretty obvious she'll get exhausted. Kenji just chuckled at her attempt and finally decided to fight back. He first dodged one of her attacks and used his knee to strike her abdomen. Of course, he's holding back. He doesn't want to turn his girlfriend into meat paste, doesn't he? Kane was shocked at Kenji's counterattack and didn't manage to react fast enough to dodge his knee. Bam. Once his knee hit her abdomen, Kane was immediately out of breath and slowly kneeled on the ground while holding her stomach in pain and pleasure. Cough, cough. You really don't hold back, do you? Kane said with staggering breath. Kenji chuckled. Oh, darling. You don't know how much I hold back. Kenji shook his head and said. What he said is true. He hasn't found an opponent who could take his punches without holding back. Now, he's waiting for the rulers and monarchs to arrive in this world. He's itching for a satisfying fight. Who knows, maybe they could scratch the itch that he's feeling these years. Kane, who just got her ass hooped, was resting on a bench while drinking an energy drink. So, how was it? When Kane noticed that Kenji was walking toward her, she then asked him with expectations. Of course, Kenji wouldn't disappoint. Amazing, in just a month, you've improved your speed and skills in katana. Kenji nodded sagely while speaking. Kane felt happy. She too also felt that she improved leaps and bounds because she managed to slice Kenji's suit with her katana. This is the first time she did that, so she's really happy, although it is not enough to catch up to him. At least it is enough to at least stand by his side. Kenji knew what she was thinking and her goal of catching up to him, but he just ignored it, not because he is looking down at her but because he knew that she needed it to improve herself more. And besides, if he told her to stop her goal to reach him and tell her that even if she's weak, she could stand by his side, it might hurt her pride as a woman and girlfriend. He knew how complex a woman's mind is so he didn't bother her goals. Whether she could catch up to him or not, for him as long she is by his side, that's enough for him. While Kenji was musing to himself, Kane was looking at her calloused hand and then stared at Kenji's hand and saw no callous. His hand is smooth like butter. When Kane saw this, she felt like laughing, 
Aren't women supposed to have smoother hands than men but why does it feel like she is the man here? If Kenji knew what she was thinking, he might use his laser vision to burn his hand just for her. Once Kane got enough rest, she then looked at Kenji and smiled. Round two? She asked eagerly. Kenji smirked at her and said, You're on. And that's just like that. They sparred with each other for the whole night, until Kenne can't raise her arms anymore. While Kenne was sleeping on the bed, Kenji was on the balcony, thinking about his loved one back in his world. He's wondering if Elijah has finally reached his dream to become an astronaut. Then, there is also his daughter, Ellie. He wonders what she's up to now. Kenji hopes that she's living a good life along with her husband. Soon, Kenji noticed that it was already past midnight, so he decided to set his thoughts aside for now and go to sleep. He went back to his room and quietly sneaks into the bed, trying to make sure that Kane won't wake up. Once he lay on the bed, he went and hugged Kane and buried her face in his chest. Meanwhile, Kane, as if sensing that her boyfriend was by her side, smiled and snuggled in more to his chest. 11. CH 29. This might be my worst chapter since I have no idea about dating stuff. In the morning, a piece of news caused a sensation around Japan. It is about Kenji's guild registration. Many hunters were lining up to join his guild, even some big shots like S rank hunter Go to Ruji, who hasn't created his guild yet, so he could be called a solo hunter. While Kenji was causing sensations around the world, our dear protagonist was oblivious to what was happening and currently preparing himself for their date. Although this is not their first date, Kenji will make sure that this date will be the best date ever for them. As for their first date? Well, it could be called a failure since, first of all, it was that time when Kenji's parents doesn't know about them being a couple so they had to hide their identities to not get caught by some paparazzi. And lastly, a dungeon outbreak occurs just near the restaurant where they were dining in, so the date was cancelled and Kenji have to clear the dungeon. Kenji hopes that this time, no dungeon breaks occur since he had already planned this date overnight. Since ladies like to shop first, then the first place that they will visit is a shopping mall. Whatever Kane wants, Kenji will buy it, even if it is a car or a house. After their shopping spree, they'll have dinner at I.C. Suyoshi in Tokyo, Minato City. A slash and ga. I don't know any of this. I'm not experienced in this field so I'll just blabber some things that I watched in some movies or animes. Once that's done, they'll visit a theme park to rest and watch the scenery. Then, they'll visit an aquarium to watch some fish or dolphins or whatever. And finally, once the date is done, it is finally time for a kiss. Kenji then focused on fixing his suit which consists of a full black long sleeve that hugs his muscular body and black tight jeans and black sneakers. Looking at the mirror, Kenji smiles to himself and thanked whoever reincarnated him for giving him such good looks. Once he was done, he went out of his room and went downstairs and finally saw Kane, who was very beautiful at the moment. She was currently wearing a red dress on her top while revealing her shoulders and at the same time showing her tattoos and a black skirt with three pairs of white buttons on the front. Kenji smiles at her and she smiles back. You're beautiful. Kenji said with a warm smile while Kane blushed at his remarks and complimented him back. You're also handsome in that suit, Kenchan. Kenji felt happy while at the same time, he was afraid that this date might not go as exactly as he planned. So that's why he decided to add a bit of a surprise for her at the end of their date. Kenji then held Kane's hand who smiled at him and they both went to the garage. Inside, they both went to his black Draco GT car, and as a gentleman, he opens the door for her which makes her smile, and went inside. Once he closed the door, he also went inside the car and slowly drove off. First things first, he drove to a shopping mall. He first parked the car and they both went inside, side by side with their hands holding each other. 
The first place that they went to was not surprisingly a clothing store, where Kane tried different kinds of outfits, which Kenji immediately bought since, for him, almost every clothes in the store looks good on her. Although Kane tried refusing at first but seeing that Kenji keeps on insisting, she finally sighed and surrendered at the end. The manager even gave them an exclusive card where they can buy everything in the store at 40% off, the next time they visit. After that, they went to an accessories store where Kane bought him a brand new watch. Although he has many expensive watches at home, there is nothing more expensive when it is given by the one you love. So Kenji decided to wear this watch every day than the expensive watches he has at home. Soon, after a few hours of shopping, Kenji noticed that Kane was getting hungry, so they went to a restaurant called Aisei Sueyoshi in Tokyo. It was then that Kenji noticed another side of Kane, a gluttonous one. Kenji stared at the stack of plates on the table. Meanwhile, Kane just kept eating and eating until finally, Kenji cannot take it anymore and asked, Kane, am I not feeding you enough? Kane stopped eating and stared at him in confusion, while her mouth is full then she shook her head and went back to eating. Slurp In the end, Kane slurped her noodles and finally leaned on her chair in pleasure, while patting her stomach. Kenji stared at Kane's stomach and saw no bulge in it making him look at her in wonder, wondering where did all the food she ate go. Kane then noticed that Kenji was staring at her stomach and blushed in shyness. Do you don't stare at my tummy like that. She used her hands to hide her abdomen and looked away in a blush. Kenji just scratched the back of his head and said, Ah, sorry about that. I just thought that you look cute when you eat. Hearing what Kenji said, Kane mentally noted to herself to always eat in front of Kenji. After eating, Kenji then proceeded to go to a park where they could see some kids playing while their parents sitting on some benches. Although there is one little problem. Look! It's Superman! A kid pointed out to him and soon he was discovered by everyone in the park who immediately rushed to him either for a picture or an autograph. When Kane and Kenji saw this, they tightened their grip on each other's hands and run away from the park, they didn't even manage to enjoy the scenery. Once they arrived in an alley, Kenji and Kane smiled at each other at how fun this day is becoming. I should have put on some disguise, Kenji muttered to himself. The reason why he didn't disguise himself was to announce to the world that he's already taken and dating Kane. Kenji can already imagine his fan club going crazy on the internet. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 9. CH30 Hey you! Give me all your wallets! Because they both were in a dark alley, it's pretty obvious that they'll be mugged since crimes were sometimes committed in a dark alley. Kenji also knows this. After all, he is a hero. Almost every criminal he sent to jail or killed always commits their crimes in a dark alley. Hey! Are you deaf? I said give me all your wall dash. The grumpy man didn't even manage to finish his sentence when suddenly, Kenji disappeared and appeared in front of him with both of his hands holding his and with Kenji's grip. Crack. Gaha! The man yelled with his everything due to the extreme pain he was feeling right now. Both of his hands were broken with bones sticking out of his wrist, and his nails were bleeding profusely. It is not wrong to say that the man will never be able to masturbate again. Although he is a bit harsh, Kenji knew that this could be called a lesson for criminals. Without pain, people won't change. Pain can be a fuel for people to change. After crying in pain for a few seconds, the man slowly raised his head while snot and tears were dripping out of his face. Kenji coldly looked at him back and said, If I still see you committing crimes again, I promise you that you'll feel something more painful than that. He then turns around and held Kane's hand before walking away from the dark alley, 
leaving the man crying on his knees while cursing himself for encountering a monster, and finally deciding to change himself for the better good. Back to Kenji. He was quietly walking with Kane while waiting for Kane's reaction to what he did earlier. Kenji saw Kane opens her mouth, and Kenji then braced himself. You were so cool back there. Kane giggles when she saw Kenji sighing in relief after hearing what she said. Do I? Kenji asks in confirmation. Kane nodded immediately. She isn't lying when she said that. He looked cool earlier especially that cold look he casts. When she saw his cold face, it gives her a vision of Kenji standing atop countless corpses with his glowing red eyes menacingly and coldly staring down upon the world. Not gonna lie, it makes her wet. Nay? Kane? Kane seems to wake up from her dreams and saw Kenji looking at her worriedly. Are you okay? You're not responding for almost a minute. What were you thinking? Kenji asks her in a worried tone. Kane felt warm at seeing Kenji's worried face and shook her head. Nothing, I was just thinking about our future. Although Kenji was still worried, he was also a bit interested in what will their future be. Perhaps an ordinary family will be fine, but thinking about the rulers and monarchs forced him to abandon these thoughts. Even though he knew that having an ordinary family is almost impossible, it doesn't hurt to try, right? We're here, Kenji said to Kane while looking at the building in front of them. Kane followed where he is looking and nodded at the sight of a blue-colored huge building. Let's go inside. Soon, Kenji and Kane were finally inside, turning around while watching some aquatic animals swimming in the water. Whoa! Kane marveled at the sight of dolphins doing a backflip in the water. Then there were also some goldfish, crabs, and many more that makes her smile. Meanwhile, Kenji was staring at Kane smiling instead of the fish. For him, this image is more beautiful than any other. Such a perfect smile perfectly fits her beauty. Kane caught Kenji looking at her and confusedly asks, Is there something on my face? She touched her face and tries to feel it if there was something wrong. Kenji shakes his head and said, Nothing, just a beautiful smile. Kane cringed at his pickup line but still gave her a pleasant feeling in her heart. Jeez, you're so cringy. How about we take a look inside there? Kane tries to hide her blush by diverting the topic and pointing at a random door in excitement. But who is Kenji? His eyes are sharper than an eagle so he caught her blush but since it might make her embarrassed, he just decided to ignore it and looked at where she pointed to. Um, Kane, that's a restroom. Kenji scratched his cheek and said to her. This time, Kane didn't manage to hide her blush anymore and just hid her face on Kenji's arm, who chuckled at seeing her cute reaction. Soon, Kane recovered from her embarrassment and they both enjoyed their date as usual. To be honest, this is the first time they both enjoyed a date. After all, since they'd become a couple they only had two dates. The first one, they didn't enjoy since both of them were too nervous. And the second one, although they're not nervous anymore, a dungeon outbreak ruined their date. So this is their third date, and Kenji swore that he'll make this date the perfect one. Although it was almost ruined by the mugger earlier, Kenji could still fix this. Soon, they both toured the whole aquarium, and they grew bored of the place, so it was time to end the date. Although both of them were sad that their date will finally end, they could still have more dates in the future. It was already dark when they went outside and found their car in the parking lot. Kenji smirks when he noticed that there were a lot of faded fingerprints on the car. He was already used to this since these fingerprints mean that some people decided to have a picture with his car. This was common for those who owned supercars. Kenji went to the passenger side and opens the door for Kane like a gentleman. Kane smiles and kissed him on the cheek before sitting inside the car. Kenji grins in happiness and closed the door before rushing to the driver's seat and sitting inside. The car's engine roared and drove away from the lot. 
Because it was already night, it just took him a few minutes before reaching their home. Kenji repeats what he did earlier and opens the door for Kenny to go out. Once she was out, she turns around and smiled at Kenji and said, I just wanted to thank you for this date. I know how you went beyond for our date tonight, and I wanted to say that this is the best date I've ever had. Thank you. After saying that, Kane went forward and placed her lips to his and everything quieted down, leaving only their breathing sounds. Ten seconds later, their lips separated leaving a bridge of their saliva, before looking at each other with loving eyes. Although the kiss was just ten seconds to him, that kiss felt like years. This may not be their first kiss, since they have kissed back then, but they're not gonna lie that this was the best kiss they had in their entire life. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 10. CH31 Time flies like a butterfly and half a year has passed. Kenji and Kane were much closer than ever since their date. That's not the only thing that has happened during the year. Dungeon outbreaks have been increasing in rates as time passes. No one could form an explanation for this happening though theories and rumors were going around about the cause but all of those are only theories. Meanwhile, only the Akano family knew who was causing this increase in dungeon outbreaks. The rulers. They don't know the reason for it, and but the husband and wife knew that they must be doing this for the greater good of this world. While Kenji didn't slack off, even though he was already strong enough to obliterate buildings with just a mere flick of his finger, that doesn't mean he's invincible. He knows that the monarchs and rulers were probably much stronger than him. And he needed more strength. So he started training in many kinds of martial arts after all a superman who is a master in martial arts is much more deadly. Although in the comics, Superman was trained in close combat by Batman, Superman didn't focus much on this and just goes around punching his enemies with his fist. He also exposes himself in the sun whenever he had time. Meanwhile, Kane wasn't also slacking off, with her goals in her mind that fuels her she started learning different kinds of martial arts. Her goal this time is to master all martial arts that exist in this world. Although martial arts aren't that helpful in dungeon raiding, imagine an S-rank hunter who has mastered martial arts. That will definitely make the hunter much more stronger compared to his fellow S-rank hunters. Enough with the martial arts talk. Kenji is currently on his way to clear another A-rank dungeon when suddenly... His phone rings. Looking at the name of the caller, he answered. Bon? This is Kenji speaking. Ah. Uh, Kenji, how are you? You know, it's been three months since we last saw each off dash. However, Kenji immediately cuts him off. Stop wasting my time and get to the point. Kenji annoyingly said. Kenji heard a sigh from the phone before Bon speaks. Well, I was just wondering if you're free right now since an S-rank gate has opened in one of the islands under Korea. I think it was Juju Island or something like that. Kenji raises his eyebrows and asks, Why me? Why not to other S-rank? And besides, why the hell would we meddle in Korea's matters? Kenji rapidly asks questions one after another. Wait, wait, wait. Look. The chairman of the Korean Hunters Association has personally asked for you since the gate isn't something that Korean hunters could handle. They'd already sent their best hunters and no one came back. It was suspected that they were all killed. His last sentence seems to make Kenji stop in his tracks and asks in interest. You mean all of them? They were just gone like poof. Gone. Yes. Poof gone. Just like that. So, will you come? Kenji seems to think for a little bit before looking at his wristwatch and saying, I'll see what I can do. Before he hangs up. He decided to finish this raid as soon as possible and hopefully could get there in time. Having decided, 
Kenji immediately went out of his car and flew towards the dungeon that he was supposed to clear. Once he was there, he didn't even greet the reporters or the personnel and just went inside the red gate. K. Kenji-sama! His assistant seems to want to say something to him, but it was already too late, and Kenji was already inside. Inside the red gate, Kenji found that he was in a dense jungle, surrounded by trees, grasses, and plants. Kenji seems to react normally since it is a commonplace when it comes to a red gate. But it was different for E to be rank gates since when you entered them, you'll always end up inside a cave. Sometimes it will be a complex cave full of mazes which depends on the rank of the gate. Kenji didn't bother waiting for the monsters to show up and instead used his x-ray vision to find all his enemies and he found them separated in groups of three. From his observations, they looked like some snakes, since they looked like they were crawling on the ground. Kenji decided to meet them first, and rushed towards the nearest group. And it seems like he was right when he saw a couple of anacondas hissing towards him when they saw him. Hello there. The anacondas hissed more intensely, and immediately charged at Kenji. Jeez, don't be such hot-headed snakes. It's bad for your health. Kenji shook his head and casually avoided one of the anacondas. Then he grabbed the next one who tried to attack him, and he used it as a weapon, like a whip. Boom! If someone were to see this, they will be shocked to see a man holding a thick five-meter-long anaconda and waving it towards its brethren like a toy. Soon, the anacondas were repelled and were now cautious of him. Meanwhile, the anaconda Kenji was holding was already dead due to constant smashing. What a poor snake. Seeing that the snake he was holding was already dead, he threw it behind him like throwing the trash. The anacondas hissed more when they saw one of them being thrown away like disposable trash. What Kenji didn't know was a battalion of huge anacondas was already on their way to him. Of course, it was because Kenji was too focused on playing with the snakes that he didn't notice, and because he was producing loud sounds when playing with the snakes that he unknowingly attracted others' attention. It was then that Kenji heard someone hissing everywhere, and when he looked around, he saw countless anacondas menacingly staring at him like he is their prey. But will Kenji let himself be bullied by them? No. Hisses. Kenji also hissed like he was mocking them. The anacondas hissed at him as if they were talking to him. Ha! Huh. Oh, sorry I was mocking you guys earlier. I'm not actually talking to you all. That seemed to trigger them and they all sprinted towards Kenji. Meanwhile, Kenji was just wondering what the anacondas taste like. And I wonder how big is the boss? 9. CH32 while Kenji was fighting with the anacondas, the situation in Korea was not good, especially after losing a bunch of high-quality hunters. One of them is S-rank hunter sung Awan, the father of the protagonist of this world. But unknown to everyone, sung Awan is actually alive and was exploring the dungeon he was trapped in. TCH, I didn't expect that ant was too powerful, we're all directly annihilated without a fight. Thanks to my tough defense, I managed to survive and maybe live to tell the tale. Sung Ail Huan chuckled to himself. Remembering that his wife and children would be lonely after he was gone, Ail Huan was determined to get out of here alive and get back to his kids. He then recalled that his wife suffered from a disease that appeared since the gates exist. Remembering this, he was even more determined to get out of here alive no matter what happens. Jin Wu Ji Na. Wait for me, I promise, I'll come back. With an indomitable will and huge determination in his mind, Samael Huan continued exploring the dungeon without him knowing that he will soon meet someone who will save him. Back to Kenji. Kenji's body was covered with blood, but this blood was not his, instead, it was the anaconda's blood. He had just finished killing the last of them and was ready to look for the boss. Using his phenomenal vision, Kenji looked around and finally found a very huge anaconda, 
probably even taller than the Eiffel Tower, curled on a huge nest while eggs were resting below her. The boss seems to be a female, Kenji said to himself before sprinting towards the boss's location and arriving without breaking a sweat. Meanwhile, the boss hissed, trying to intimidate Kenji, which doesn't affect him. Kenji shakes his head at the futile attempt and decided to finish this as soon as possible. After shaking his head, Kenji raised his head and stared at the boss's eyes and was about to kill her when suddenly, the boss hissed violently, and something seems to attack Kenji, and he didn't manage to react. What? Kenji tried to speak when he suddenly felt that he couldn't speak and when he tried to move his body, it seems like he was frozen like a statue? Fuck. How can I move? Kenji cursed and no matter what he do, he can't move even an inch. Meanwhile, Kenji could feel a shadow looking over him, and since he can't move his body, Kenji just assumes that the boss is about to eat him. Oh shit! Kenji cursed again, and then he was swallowed by the giant anaconda. Inside the boss, Kenji seems to realize something. Wait. She isn't an anaconda. I think I've heard of her somewhere before. Hmm. While Kenji was lost in thoughts, he didn't notice that he was drowned in an acid that could melt even the toughest mineral in the world. But this is nothing to Kenji, who could probably survive a nuclear bomb, though he might come out scratched. While Kenji was lost in thoughts, outside the gate, the manager of Kenji seems to be walking back and forth while nervously sweating. How am I gonna tell him? The manager muttered nervously. As for the reason he was nervous, was because he just got the news that Kenji's girlfriend, Kane gone out of the country and was on her way to Korea. And just by thinking about the S-rank gate that appeared on Jeju Island, Yuko, which is the name of the manager, could already guess what was going on inside Kane's mind. She's definitely aiming at that S-rank gate. Yuko yelled inside his mind. At the same time, Kenne had just gotten off the private plane and finally called out for a taxi for her. She did all this in secret since she doesn't want news having their attention on her since for her, it's a hassle. Then, she went and gave a call to Korean Hunters Association. Good morning, this is Korean Hunters Association, how may I help you? On the other side of the phone, a lady answered her in a very fluent Korean accent. It was then that Kane realized that she went to Korea without even knowing their language. Eya, yeah, hello? Instead of Japanese or Korean, Kane tries to speak English since it's the only language that she was familiar with except for Japanese. HM? English? Yes, hello, how may I help you? The Korean lady was confused at first but professionality came over her and answered in a fluent English accent. Um, may I speak to your chairman? Kane said. Please hold on for a second. The lady said then takes out a book and seems to be trying to find something and when she finally found what she was looking for, she went back to the phone call. I'm sorry, the chairman is currently busy in a meeting, please call later. The lady said and was about to hang up when Kane suddenly said. Wait. This is Tawada Kane an S rank in Japan, and I would really like to meet your chairman. Kane decided to reveal her identity to make this easier. At first, she doesn't want to reveal herself yet since news about her might spread and she doesn't want that, especially on how fast news travel and no doubt, it'll reach her boyfriend in a minute. Eh ah, then, I'll try and schedule you a meeting with him. The lady then goes and did her work. Kane nodded and hangs up. She then felt a bit of guilt for not telling Kenji about what she was about to do. She just wanted to prove to him that she could stand side by side with him. She wanted to prove that she was also strong and will not be a burden to Kenji. Although Kenji didn't say anything about her being a burden, she felt that she was a burden so she has to do this. With extreme determination, she was ready to do whatever it takes for this. She's gonna prove to Kenji that she was worthy of him. 
You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 9. CH33 That's it. It's a basilisk. According to what I've read, it can turn his enemies into stone through eye contact. Kenji seems to realize what kind of creature the boss is. Does that mean I've turned into stone? How am I gonna get back now Kenji grumbles in his mind. Unknown to him, he was fortunate that the boss was a low-level basilisk compared to the high ones, so within just a few hours, he should be able to move at least a finger. Another good thing was the time difference between an A rank and the real world outside. So a week inside will be a day outside. This is the first time I actually struggle. Since he was just drowning in acid, Kenji decided to pass time by thinking about everything he had ever done since he came from this world. Now that I think about it, I definitely should have spent some time basking in the sun. I was too short-sighted that there are actually beings stronger than me out there, like the vessels of the monarchs and rulers, not to mention the monarchs and rulers themselves. From this point, Kenji started pointing out every mistake he did since he was reborn. Soon, five hours have passed, and Kenji has already a change of mind. From now on, he'll start training and giving himself time basking in the sun. Then, he also has to keep in mind about his weakness in magic and the red sun. As for the kryptonite, maybe that thing will not exist in this world, so Kenji can rest assured, although he still has to watch out for some rocks that have the same effects as kryptonite out there. We'll never know. Since five hours has passed, Kenji could already move his left arm and he could already feel his sense of touch coming back to him so he could feel the slimy thing enveloping his whole body. But Kenji doesn't mind this, he endured more than this during World War II. He even tried to drink his own piss when he was stuck in a forest without food or drinks. Not only that, but he also ate raw flesh of snakes and chickens, and he even ate bugs. Kenji used his moving arm to slap himself. He doesn't want to remember every suffering he endured back then. Once I could move my head, I'll use my beams to kill this basilisk. Kenji said to himself. Once he's out here, he could finally get out of here. While Kenji was waiting for his body to move again, Kane already arrived at Korean Hunters Association and currently waiting in the guest room while sipping on her tea. Soon, the door opens and the Go Gunhee, the chairman of the Korean Hunters Association, walks inside. Gun he was a muscular old man with gray hair, greenish gray eyes, and numerous scars on his body. While he was wearing a three piece suit, Kane stands up to greet him but was only met with a warm smile of his and a fluent Japanese accent, shocking Kane. Please, no need to be formal. Anyway, my name is Go Gunhee. I assume that you're Tawada Kane an S-rank from Japan and also the lover of the national hunter Akano Kenji. Once having said that, Gunhi gestures for her to sit back on the couch, while he also did the same and sat. Kane recovered from her shock and nodded at him seriously, and then she sat. Tawada-san, I know you don't like formal things, so let's get to the point of our meeting. I agree for you to participate in the Jeju Island S-rank gate, but I have a request before you go. Gunhee immediately agreed with her, which shocked Kane a bit, and knew that nothing is free in this world, and she was right when she heard his last sentence. Kane was ready to burst out of here if the old man requests her something strange or perverted. Only Kenji has the privilege to access her body. What is it? Kane muttered while coldly glaring at Gunhee as if saying if you request something strange, I'll cut you into pieces, making him gulp in fear. Not because she was strong but because of the man behind her. He's not confident he could win against that guy even though he is a vessel of a ruler. But deep inside, he knew that Kenji is definitely involved in monarchs and rulers. He already has suspicions that he might be a vessel of the dragon monarch, 
but he quickly erased that off, since if he is the vessel of him then he should be able to command Kamish instead of killing him, and also because his powers and abilities aren't related to dragons except for his overwhelming strength. Please! Don't look at me like that, I mean you no harm. My request was just before you go, I hope that you could convince Kenji to have a meeting with me. I tried to arrange a meeting with him, but it seems like he was too busy since I haven't received any response from him. Gun he said sheepishly while scratching the back of his head. More like too busy cuddling with me, Kane chuckled in her mind after she heard what he said. Then she sighed in relief because she thought that this meeting might get bloody, but it was just her thinking too much. She then nodded at him. Sure, I'll do that but don't blame me if he refused. Gunhee nodded at her. Of course. I just want him to be informed that I want to meet him. Kenny nodded at his words and after a few minutes of chat, they both said farewell to each other before Kenny went outside, missing the loving look of Gunhee. Take care of your mother for me, Kenny chan Gunhee smiled sadly before bowing his head while sitting on the sofa. Back to Kenji. Kenji could already feel his left leg and half of his body and face. Just a little bit more. Kenji mused to himself in his mind. I hope I could arrive there in time. Kenji was really excited at the thought of meeting another disaster like Kamish. During his fight with Kamish, he felt his blood boiling, that his enemy could fight with him without bursting into blood mist. Even though he was holding back, but it was just a little bit unlike when he fights others, he has to hold back a lot. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 8. CH34 Time flies like a butterfly, another hour has passed, and Kenji could finally feel his body senses. Being able to move most of his body, Kenji patted the basilisk's flesh and muttered. It was fun while it lasted. His eyes then glowed in red and a familiar hot beam burst out of his eye sockets, slicing through the basilisk's insides. Outside the stomach, the basilisk was just chilling on her own with her eggs warming up underneath her when suddenly, she felt pain inside her and it only increases until a pair of dark red lasers slice through her body. Inside, Kenji floated in the air while his eyes were continuously burning the basilisk's body. Meanwhile, the basilisk was hissing in pain while using her everything to concentrate on healing her body. Kenji was surprised at how fast the basilisk healed her body, perhaps a little bit faster than Wolverine's. Deciding to not use his lasers, Kenji inhaled a lot of fresh air until his lungs buffed up before exhaling every air he inhaled. Foo. The basilisk's body was immediately frozen from the inside and out leaving only the eggs underneath her. Once all the air inside his lung is almost depleted, Kenji stops and forms his finger in a flicking motion with the basilisk's body on its front. Letting go of his finger, the basilisk didn't even move an inch before she blew up into pieces. When the basilisk was gone, Kenji noticed that most of her eggs are destroyed leaving only an egg that was still intact but still has a few cracks. Looking around, Kenji crouched and gently picked up the egg, and then Kenji used his x-ray to take a peek inside the egg and saw that the baby basilisk is still alive, curled up inside, and still sleeping. Kenji seems to fall into thinking for a bit before making a decision. A basilisk companion doesn't sound bad. Kenji smiled and nodded to himself. Today, he decided to surprise Kenny with his gift. Outside the gate, everyone seems to be preparing their equipment to harvest the mana crystals. To them this is a normal routine. And sure enough, the gate swirled and Kenji came out in his full glory, while holding an egg. Meanwhile, Kenji just went out and felt the sun basking him again. Soon, his assistant immediately went towards him in a hurry, confusing Kenji. K Kenji sama! Yuko called out to him with respect, but he was out of breath, so he stops and caught his breath first before continuing. 
Meanwhile, Kenji was patient enough to wait for him even though he was in a hurry. Kenji-sama, Ayatsukane-sama, she went out of the country and was currently in Korea. Yuko told him after catching his breath, he doesn't even notice the egg he was carrying. Kenji frowns and seems to predict what she's thinking, before shaking his head. Kanebaka, Kenji mutters before looking at his assistant gratefully. Deliver this to my house, no questions. Kenji gave Yuko his egg. After that, he crouched down and jumped a few feet away from the ground. Boom! Due to his strength, everyone was shocked when Kenji suddenly flew up and some clouds of dust spread around due to the blast of winds. While the newbies were very annoyed, those who has been on the job for a year just chuckled at their reactions. While Kenji was on his way, Kane was on a helicopter, and below her was Jeju Island. Looking down at the island, Kane inhaled and exhaled before jumping out without a parachute. She doesn't need a parachute, she is an S-rank hunter for a reason. And jumping out of a chopper from this height isn't lethal to her. Boom! With her left knee on the ground while her right leg is bending, with her right hand on the ground while her left hand is bent behind her. No doubt, this is definitely a hero entrance. Standing up, she patted her knee and fist to remove the dirt before looking in front of her and seeing some destroyed buildings and some black ants as huge as a car. Unsheathing her katana, she immediately sliced the closest ant to her before rushing up to the others. What followed was a massacre, with blood trailing off to the huge mountain. To Kane, this mission is simple. All she gotta do was to go inside and kill the queen and all of this will be over. Oh, how naive she was thinking that this'll be easy. What she doesn't know was that the Korean hunters weren't eradicated due to the ant's strength but because of their never-ending numbers, to the point that almost every hunter either became exhausted or ran out of mana. In front of Kane was a very dark cave where she saw the ants come out off. If her guess is correct then the queen should be inside there. Without hesitation, Kane bravely entered the ant queen's nest. Back to Kenji. Currently, he was flying towards Jeju Island after searching on Google Maps. With his speed, arriving at Jeju Island will only take less than a minute. He doesn't even care about the consequences anymore. He'll just ask the chairman of the Korean Hunters Association to clean him later but first, his priority is his girlfriend. As much as he wanted to be mad at her for making such a decision, he can't seem to do it. It's like what she just did makes him proud of her. He doesn't know why but that's just what he feels like right now. Though he'll still lecture her about this. Soon, he have finally arrived at Jeju Island and before he could land, his phone rang. Ring ring. Answering the phone, Kenji asks. Kenji speaking, who is this? Kenji, it's me your dad. I just got a call saying that you illegally crossed the country again. It turns out it was his dad, Chikashi, who just got the news about him. Kenji chuckled while scratching the back of his head and said, Sorry dad, it was an emergency situation. I see. Then I'll cover you up. Anyway, now that you mention it, what's the emergency situation? Hearing his question, Kenji answers truthfully since there's no harm to it. I see, then you should definitely save her, then you'll be her knight in shining armor. She'll surely fall head over heels for you again, trust me on this, I did the same and your mother became crazy for me. Do you hear me, son? She was crazy for my love. Kenji seems weirded out by his father's rumblings and decided to end the call. Okay, I'll hang up the call now I still got a lady to save. Yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, after saving her, don't use a condom. This old man is ready to become a grandfather. Kenji immediately hangs up not wanting to hear any more of his father's ramblings. After putting his phone away, Kenji cracked his neck and fingers before staring at the island below him. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. 
www.patreon.com slash slimesage 9. CH35 At the same time Kenji arrived at Jeju Island, Kane was currently breathing heavily while clutching her bleeding arm. SH asterisk T How many of them are there? I can't keep up with them. Kane was cursing in her mind while looking around and running away. Behind was a swarm of big ants that seems to be endless. Kane sensed an ant hiding in a corner where she was going, and when she reached the corner, she then dodged the sneaking ant's surprise attack and swung her katana in a swift motion in front of her. Slash SKCKLH With her years of training in katana and sparring with Kenji almost every day, she's much more stronger than herself in the canon. With her speed and skills, she can be a very deadly opponent to everyone. This is why killing these ants is easy for her but the problem is the numbers. This is one versus thousands or perhaps millions. Looking behind her while running, she saw that the ants haven't stopped chasing her. Give me a break! Kenny complained to herself while slicing another ant that tries to sneak up on her. Soon many others followed making Kenne very exhausted. Before she knew it, she was already sitting down inside a dark cave she managed to hide in. Only now did she regret coming here all by herself and not only that, she didn't even tell Kenji about her trip here. She wished that she could at least say goodbye to her mother, Kenji, and his parents. Kenne could already feel the blood gushing out of her arm and stomach while Kane was contemplating about her life. Inside a dungeon, Samai Alhuan was on the verge of death due to starvation and dehydration. He then takes a photo out of his pocket, and it reveals to be his wife and children, Sung Jin Wu and Sung Jiha. Drops of water fall on the photo, and it reveals Samai Alhuan crying while caressing the photo, especially his wife. A few seconds later, he carefully placed the photo back in his pocket and just randomly stared at the walls of the dungeon. Unknown to him, a bunch of angelic humanoid beings were watching him all the time. He should be suitable to eliminate both of their vessels. One of them said to the one in the front. One of them nodded and said, You're right, I'll make him my vessel. What are your thoughts, brightest fragment of brilliant light? The brightest fragment of brilliant light nodded his head in confirmation. Yes. You should proceed. Hearing what he said, the other rulers also nodded their heads when one of them noticed something and decided to tell the other rulers about it. How about her? One of the rulers pointed out and they saw a girl with black hair and purple lipstick, who seems to be exhausted and clutching her bleeding arm and stomach. Hmm, maybe we should also make her a vessel so she could help in eliminating the monarch's vessels. After all, Ailhuan can't kill both of them all alone. He's gonna need some help. One of the rulers suggested which sparks some interest from the other rulers. That's a great idea, shining fragment of brilliant light. Even the brightest fragment of brilliant light was also interested since killing two monarch's vessels is impossible so another vessel might be a good idea. I'll make her my vessel. The brightest fragment of brilliant light spoke out his thoughts which were agreed by the others. Then we should proceed, I'll go and meet the girl. The brightest fragment of brilliant light said and stands up, followed by the others and then they all flashed away in light before they disappeared. Back to Ayal Juan. He could already feel death looming over him. His eyelids are close to being shut when suddenly, a bright light blinded him, while at the same time, waking him up a bit. When he opens his eyes, he was met with a few humanoid angelic beings, which are currently the rulers. A am I dreaming? Ayal Juan muttered while wiping his eyes to see if what he is seeing is real. You are not dreaming, mortal. We are the rulers, and we have a proposal for you. The shining fragment of brilliant light spoke out. Our rulers? Ayal Juan would really like to slap himself to see if he's dreaming. The shining fragment of brilliant light, 
and the others patiently waited. Seeing that they were quiet, Ayal Juan was embarrassed and said, You um, what proposal? Would you like to see your family again? The brightest fragment of brilliant light said. Ayal Juan's eyes widened in shock and hurriedly said, Are really? How can I see them again? He then tried to crawl towards the shining fragment of brilliant light. The shining fragment of brilliant light didn't mind this and said, We have a proposal for you, which will make you see your family again. Ayal Juan seems to teared up and begged. Please, I'll do anything to see them again. Then we have a mission for you. While the shining fragment of brilliant light was speaking with Sun Ayal Juan, Kane also met with the brightest fragment of brilliant light, who was also proposing the same to her. And because of that, the monarchs went into hiding and some of them are currently using a mortal's body to interfere with the mortal world. The brightest fragment of brilliant light first explained to her the situation. Kane was just listening and sometimes, glancing at the rulers with caution. Then, what's the purpose of letting me know this? Kane confusedly asked. I have a proposal for you. Do you want to get strong? When Kane heard what he said, she was a bit tempted to accept but decided to hear the proposal first. Who knows what kind of proposal he's proposing? Seeing that Kane was interested, the brightest fragment of brilliant light decided to strike the iron while it's hot. I could make you my vessel which in turn gives you strength that is out of your system and in return all you have to do is to eliminate the shadow monarch and the star monarch. We sense them here in your world but we can't pinpoint their exact location. So Tawada Kane, do you agree? Kane seems to be contemplating about the decision she's gonna make. This is a chance for her, a chance to stand side by side with Kenji.